All season long, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had the measure of the Calgary Stampeders. But home field advantage in the playoffs, for the first time in a decade, goes to the Stampeders. It is Calgary versus Saskatchewan in a sudden death playoff as the road to the Grey Cup continues on CBC Sports. A playoff game in Calgary is a rare sight. The last time it happened, Joe Clark was in the midst of a free frame as Prime Minister. The year's top drawing movie was the story of a bitter marriage breakup, Kramer versus Kramer. The Montreal Canadiens won the last Stanley Cup in a dynasty of four straight. The year was 1979 and Calgary hosted the BC Lions in the West semifinal. Calgary fans haven't attended a playoff game at home since. They will today to see if Larry Kuhari can inspire the Stampeders to victory. He has some options, but Kuharik has chosen veteran Danny Barrett as his starting quarterback. It's a given that Barrett hooking up with Larry Willis is part of the Calgary game plan. John Gregory's game plan is to have his Rough Riders play the same way in this playoff as they did during the season, when quarterback Kent Austin dissected the Calgary defense as Saskatchewan beat the Stampeders in three of four games. Today, the season has come down to this one game, the West semifinal, on the CFL on CBC. The climate certainly has not changed since Calgary last hosted a playoff game. It can be winter-like at this time of year and is today, although pleasant. Welcome to McMahon Stadium, and we can say that because the surprise team of the CFL season earned the right to host this game, and the Stampeders hope to cash in on home field. They have had a nasty habit of coming up short in some big games at home this season. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders finished the season held together with bailing wire, but Don, their injury list is a whole lot shorter today given the sudden death status of this playoff game. Scott, the return of three injured players, Milson Jones, Jeff Fairholm, and David Albright, particularly Albright, should be a big plus, Ron, for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Despite missing five games, he led the team in tackles. Oh, I think he's a big part of that defense, and especially the Calgary Stampeders today want to run the football. If you're going to run the football, you must block the middle linebacker. Albright's job today, stop that running game, force them to throw it. While Albright led Saskatchewan in ta uh, tackles, Doug Tank Landry led the league in tackles, and it's a question of whether or not he will be able to finish the game. That's the big question mark for the Stampeders, but the big thing is he's going to start the game. I think the way he plays, he's the enthusiasm, he ignites them, he gets them going, and I think if he can get them going and can't finish, that momentum could carry him through, but he is an important part of their defense. Well, all armies require a tank in their arsenal, and if Doug Landry cannot finish the game for the Calgary Stampeders, they could be missing one of their major weapons. Scott? Well, Don, as we focus on the West and the East at the Sky Dome, the Bombers and the Argos are in the final stages of deciding the East semifinal. At last word, the Bombers leading the Argos 29-7 late in the game. At halftime and inside the CFL, we'll go live to the Sky Dome for key plays and reaction from the victorious coach. You're watching Foster's CFL Live on CBC. The CFL on CBC. Brought to you by Foster's Lager. Proud to bring you the best of the CFL. By Priority Courier, official courier of the Canadian Football League. And by 7-Up. Are you up for it? You're going to like the taste of Foster's Draft. Hi again, everyone. It's a cool afternoon at McMahon Stadium, a temperature of minus 5 degrees, but conditions are actually better than were originally forecast. The weatherman had called for snow during the course of the game. The Calgary Stampeders preparing to kick off to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Mark McLaughlin has the ball teed up at the 35-yard line. The first time Calgary has hosted a playoff game since 1979. And Tim McRae will return the opening kickoff if he can ever find it back at the 11-yard line. He loses the football. And it's recovered by McCrary.
to start the ball game. David McCrary recovering the opening kickoff as Tim McCray could not pick it up. You know, Don, you hate to say it, but the sun gets into McCray's eyes at first, but then after that, he's just got to hold on. He can't find it, but watch when he does finally get a hold of it. He is really hit just on the ball, and McCrary hits it, and then McCrary's the one that recovers it. So Danny Barrett's got the chance to get the Stampeders off and running very early. McCrary recovering the opening kickoff fumble <laughs> by Tim McCray. It's first and goal from the sixth. And Kennard Martin is stopped at the three-yard line. They have Kennard Martin and Andy McVeigh at the running back positions throughout most of the season. It was Lorenzo Graham and Tim Petras, but they are out with injuries. And those are the seasonal stats for the starting quarterback, Danny Barrett. Not a real surprise to see him starting. You know, if you're coming into a big game, you want experience in there. You want a veteran and good leadership qualities. That's what Danny Barrett has. And if he gets him into the end zone right now, boy, well, that's really going to help his confidence. Second and goal, end zone pass, incomplete. It was intended for Zeno, and it will be third and goal. Marshall Toner was also in the end zone, but it was Zeno who was the target. So the Stampeders are unable to capitalize as they had hoped on that opening kickoff miscue by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and they will be forced to attempt a field goal on third and goal from the four. I don't know, Don, you're down inside the five-yard line and around that three-and-a-half, four-yard line with three plays. Well, there'll be a lot of people wondering why they didn't run straight at that Saskatchewan defense. Try to win that battle on the line of scrimmage. Mark McLaughlin with the field goal, and the Calgary Stampeders are first on the board with only a minute and 20 seconds gone in this opening quarter. 3-0, Calgary leading Saskatchewan. A contingent of Saskatchewan fans made the trek from Regina to Calgary for this playoff encounter. Not as many as they had originally anticipated, but still a large group and a very vocal group nonetheless. Well, they always are. When they show up, you know, they're going to let everybody know they're here. And they got great fans, so the big thing is they follow them, and that's what you need right now. But, you know, like, let's go back to that play. I can't believe that you've you got to win the battle on the line of scrimmage in a big game, in a playoff game, a semifinal game, whatever you want to call it. You've got to run at them and show that defense you could knock them off the ball. Let's update that Eastern semifinal for you. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers leading the Toronto Argonauts at the Sky Dome 29-7 with just a couple of minutes remaining. Winnipeg will be heading for Iverwind Stadium next Sunday to face the Ticats in the Eastern final. The Stampeders attempting a short kickoff. It goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. It did not travel the necessary 10 yards. But the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are going to take possession. They have the option, and that backfired against the Calgary Stampeders. Calgary decline. Now, let me ask you a question, Ron. They attempt a short kickoff. Why wouldn't they have gambled on third and goal at the four-yard line? That's a good question. I think when you got a 7 nothing lead, go for the touchdown, number one. You only get three instead of seven. Then kick deep, try to pin them in, get field position but right now they've given field position back to Saskatchewan and if Kent Austin can get this offensive movement with the short passes get the running game going he's got Milson Jones in there today to block for McCray. McCray's the guy that makes the offense go if they get the running game going it's going to be him that does it. Fair Holmes is a lot like Landry how long will he last today the big thing is as long as he's in there he takes pressure off Don Narcisse and this is all that's all important in the Saskatchewan offense. Second and eight from the 41-yard line. Nelson Jones playing with a cast on his thumb. Only able to pick up two yards, and Kent Austin scrambling all over the place. Still looking for a receiver downfield. Finally spots run, and the pass is complete for a first down at the 30-yard line. And Nelson Jones is on the receiving end of the throw. Kent Austin ran all over the park before he finally picked out Nelson Jones, who has that big cast on the thumb of his left hand. He is back in the lineup after suffering a broken thumb. He had a pin in that thumb, and they put a cast on it, enabling him to play in this game. Well, we know he makes big plays, and I didn't think Kent Austin could scramble that well. He did a heck of a job. First and 10 from the 30. David McCray on the earth. 
Tim McRae, I should say, on the receiving end of that throw. And that will be a gain of about four yards. Well, this Calgary Stamp Stampeders must come up big defensively. We need Mitchell Price up front to get, squeeze that pocket on Austin. Warnock's got to get upfield and force Austin up to allow Price to make the sack. And Doug Landry has got to make some tackles today, and he's got to be the inspirational leader. With a big game like this, you need everything you can going for it. Second and six, Saskatchewan from the shotgun. And Austin throwing deep, incomplete. He was looking for Jeff Fairholm. Fairholm is the key to the Saskatchewan attack. Fairholm had 11 touchdowns during the course of the season, but he is limping slightly even as he runs off to that Saskatchewan bench. Back on October 8th, he started the game against the Calgary Stampeders here at McMahon Stadium, ran a reverse on the first play, pulled that hamstring a little more, and was forced out of the lineup for the rest of the day. I think he's hurting a little bit, too, because yesterday when some of the media asked him about his ankle, he said, I'm not talking about it. I just want to get through this game. Ridgeway's field goal attempt is partially blocked. It rolls down to the three-yard line. Hopkins brings it back to the 20. And that's where the Calgary Stampeders will take over with 11-17 remaining in the opening quarter. On that field goal attempt, Will Johnson's 6'5 height proved to be an advantage. Well, what an acquisition he's been since he's joined the club. But watch him come from the inside on the left side. He got, he got inside between two offensive linemen. That is a no-no. You always step down to the inside. No penetration. 6'5", as you say, Don, he got up and batted it away. First and 10 from the 21, Danny Barrett rolling out, and Danny Barrett will get maybe two yards before being brought down by Bobby Jerusalem. Well, we talked about the, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders needing to run the football a little bit with McCray, but the Calgary Stampeders have to get Kennard and Martin running with the football. They're missing Lorenzo Graham. They're going to run Martin, McCray, and Tony Spellatini a little bit all out of that running back position. Brock Smith has to do the job inside to allow Larry Willis to get single coverage outside. Second and eight for the Stampeders under the direction of Danny Barrett. They lead by a score of 3-0. Barrett with time, throwing to the sidelines, incomplete, looking for Mark Zeno, and Calgary will be sending the putting unit out of the field. Well, we saw on first down, Danny Barrett running the option down the line of scrimmage. You know, yesterday when we were talking to Coach Gu Harry, we see right here, he said they were going to run three different types of options, a speed option, a belly option, and a trap option. That time, Danny Barrett just takes it down the line of scrimmage, and he's, you know, he's got a bad knee. I'm a little bit surprised. I figured when he was talking running the option, they put Terrence Jones in for that. Danny Barrett's got that bad knee. It's a little bit surprising to see him running it early. Brett Maddich stands at his own five, uh, seven yard line for this third down kick. Good driving kick. Richie Hall waits for it at the 47 yard line. And Richie Hall returns it to the Calgary 50. There's a penalty flag on the play. Well, we're certainly relieved, and I'm sure Hall football fans are, to see Richie Hall back in the Saskatchewan lineup. If you watched our telecast last week from Edmonton, Richie Hall went off on a stretcher in an ambulance after colliding with an Edmonton player. And Major Fire face mask. Calgary number 45, first down. Brunel Quinn, uh, face mask violation. It was feared he had suffered a neck injury. He is wearing that protective collar, but actually all he suffered in that collision was a very bad headache. Yeah, he'd need to take a couple days off practice. Then John Gregory sat him out. Don't put a helmet on. Take it easy. Let, every, let all the cobwebs clear, and he's ready to go today. So I think everybody's happy to see that. A face mask call against Vernell Quinn taking the ball down to the 34-yard line. First and 10, Saskatchewan. Tim McRae upset as he tried to go off tackle by Mitchell Price. Boy, Mitchell Price really made a good play. Lined up there. They tried to run a straight dive. Looked like he came right through Roger Aldag, number 44, and got that hand out there to trip him up. Mitchell Price is another guy who plays a lot like Gerald Bayless with the Toronto Argonauts. You know, he causes a lot of things to happen, but doesn't get a lot of sacks. But one thing for sure, you need him up on that front four. Second and eight, Saskatchewan. Austin completes the pass to Fairholm. He will be stopped short of a first down at the 25. Well, that Eastern semifinal is now complete. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will be moving on to Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton next Sunday. They defeated the Toronto Argonauts 30-7. The first game the Blue Bombers have won in their last eight. 
Seven in a row, a losing streak that extended over the final seven weeks of the season. We suggested early in the telecast that Jeff Fairholm was having some problems with that ankle, and it's obvious that he is encountering more difficulties. And whether or not he will be able to continue is a question that has to be of concern to Saskatchewan coach John Gregory because they moved Jeff Bentram into that slot back position and James Ellingson to a wide out position to accommodate the return of Jeff Fairholm. What you have to like about Fairholm is you, you're getting to that stage of the season where if you can get the uniform on, you play. He's giving it the shot. He's going to go out and try it. He'll go as long as he can. If he can't go, you can't go, but you've you got to give him credit for going out there and trying because a receiver that can't run is not of much use. Field goal try by David Ridgway, his second attempt of the game. This one is good. 8.48 is the time remaining with the score tied in the opening quarter. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC. Larry Kuharik, the Calgary coach, was telling me yesterday that the ambitions of his football team at the start of the year were solid and realistic. He said, I am not surprised at all that we finished second. Hopkins on the return. Gets away from one tackle, evades Sean Daniels. And Hopkins with an excellent run back to the Saskatchewan 53. Don, we knew special teams were important coming in. That's been Calgary's strength in their series with Saskatchewan. Hopkins brought one back in the first game of the season, 100 yards for a touchdown. And you can see this setting up very well. He starts to the short side. Now he's going to go to the wide side of the field. Look at the red jerseys in front of him. And Sean Daniels doesn't make the tackle. Now he just turns it up into the seam. And it's a good thing they got some pursuit coming back to make the tackle. But good field position. 47 yards on the return for Hopkins. First and 10, Calgary. The ball at the Saskatchewan 54-yard line. The score is tied at three. Handoff inside to Andy McVay, and McVay is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Well, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have to establish up front that they're going to control the line of scrimmage. That goal line stand down there on first down help, but Bobby Jurison getting upfield on Danny Barrett, and then Gary Lewis, the guy that makes him go up front, that's the guy you have to have making the tackles. And right there, we saw the other man, Chuck Klingbo, Bill, that's 260 pounds, but very strong, got upfield and made the tackle. So they're trying to establish their, they're the boss on the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, three receivers to the left as Barrett drops back, looks that way, picks out Larry Willis for a first down. All the way to the 17. The last time, Don, they dropped into that defense, made it look like a blitz. They dropped back into a zone. This time they decided to come get Danny Barrett. That forces single coverage. Steve Wiggins on Larry Willis. It's really no contest. Look how much of a cushion Larry Willis has. You still don't see the defensive back. He catches the football. Finally, Wiggins shows up. Willis has too much speed for him. 38 yards. So again, they're down in there again. First and 10, Calgary at the Saskatchewan 16-yard line. Larry Willis keeping that streak alive of making at least one reception in every game he has played. Quarterback sack for Bobby Jurison as he drops Danny Barrett back at the 23-yard line. That's Bob. Bobby Jurison is an excellent pass rusher. That's what we're just talking about in their key. He's going to come from the outside, get the pressure from the inside, then Barrett can't escape. This time, bang, right inside Lloyd Fairbanks, who's a pretty good offensive tackle, and he's there to make the sack and put him in a second and long. Well, Bobby Jurison shared Saskatchewan quarterback sack honors with the departed James Curry, each with 16. Second and 17, Calgary from the 23-yard line. Barrett loses his footing as he goes down in the grasp of Gary Lewis. Gary Lewis, the guy we say makes things happen on that defensive front four. We saw our two keys, Jersey come from the outside and beat Lloyd Fairbanks. This time, Gary Lewis gets by Dan Perrone, who's a pretty good offensive guard, and he makes the sack. They're almost back far enough where a field goal is going to be a pretty tough shot from where they started. Well, that's the strength of the Saskatchewan defense. Those front four, they lead the league in quarterback sacks. And that time, they only rushed four. They didn't bring any linebackers. Mark McLaughlin's 40-yard field goal attempt is good as the Calgary Stampeders regain the lead with 5.54 remaining in the opening quarter. 6-3, Calgary over Saskatchewan. 
Don Gregory, just prior to the final game of the season, had his contract extended through 1990. Gregory quite optimistic coming into this game as to the Riders' chances in the playoff encounter here at McMahon Stadium. His counterpart, Larry Koharik, equally is confident. He said, we earned something that no other team has been able to do in Calgary in the past 10 years, and that is host a playoff game. He also said yesterday, Don, a thing that I like to say, we've been up and down this year. If we play well, we can win. If we don't, we can't win. And awesome throwing deep. Incomplete, intended for Bentram. He was covered by Hopkins. And it was good defense, whether Bentram knows it or not. He went up to catch the football, but he ended up tipping it away from Ron Hopkins, who would have intercepted that ball. Junior Thurman is playing that free safety position. He comes over to try and help Ron Hopkins. He doesn't get there in time, but Jeff Bentram was the intended target, unable to make the catch. They've been going with five import defensive backs for about the past three games. And what allowed him to do was Matt Finley being able to play so well at that one linebacker position to get a guy with Thurman speed back deep. Austin to throw again, looking for Narcisse. He makes the catch for a first down. You said it right, Don. That is a good catch. When that football's thrown high to a wide receiver, sometimes that defensive back can cause him to drop it by hitting him in the back. But watch Marcy. He just turns in. Here comes Major to make the hit. Look how high he goes up, but he pulls that ball down to the body, gets it into the body, can't knock it out of there. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 49-yard line. Narcisse has had a great deal of success against Calgary. Three games of over 100 yards in pass receptions. Tim McRae picks up about three yards as he tries to go inside. I would think that running inside against Calgary will be a tough chore today. It's going to be tough, Bob, but you know, when you get down to these games, you've got to control the line of scrimmage. Your offensive line has to know that when we want to run the football, we will knock them off. We'll get them off the line of scrimmage. Fairholm's back in the game, looking for somebody to block him and Howard Fields. <laughs> he's still limping a little bit on even as he's trying to block. Second and seven. Austin dumps it off to Tim McRae. That will be close to a Saskatchewan first down. He is stopped at the 51-yard line. Well, that's, that's what John Gregory was talking about. If we can throw the ball short, run the football, make first downs, and then finally end up putting it into the end zone, we win the football game. He says, our offense will move it. It's whether we finish the drive. It's interesting that Boston was not the starting quarterback through the first six games of the season. Tom Burgess was firing touchdown passes at a record pace, and then Burgess lost his starting job to Kent Austin, and he has been the Saskatchewan starting quarterback since then. Now, the two of Burgess and Austin threw 38 touchdowns this year to lead the CFL. The big thing with Austin, against Calgary, he's hitting 64% of his passes. Boy, that's a big stat. He had a record day here on October the 8th, setting a Saskatchewan record for passing yardage. Tim McCray gets Rob Bresciani also set a Saskatchewan record that day, 192 yards. Bresciani is missing from the slot back position. Tim McCray, the CFL leader in all-purpose yards, managed to churn away for four on that run. It's second and six Saskatchewan. The ball is at the Calgary 47-yard line. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up by Saskatchewan. There's the pass. Complete for a first down. James Ellingson, the man who was nicknamed the Duke. One of the things about Ellingson, he likes to play Calgary. He's had his best days against the Stampeders. We'll move some wide out. Again, man-to-man -man coverage. Pass is high, but what's Ellingson? All right, come on back to the football. Get the hands and pull it down right now. Good defense, but it's a good catch by Ellingson in the first down. He has pleasant memories of the October 29th game right here. His first two professional touchdowns against the Stampeders. Take inside to McRae. Austin to the sidelines, and that will be another Saskatchewan first down. Donald Narcisse on the receiving end of the throw. Boy, when you can get one-on-one -on -one coverage on receivers, especially like Don Narcisse, he's had that big year with 81 receptions coming in. Bootleg action, that gives Austin a lot of time. You notice how much Narcisse is taking to run the pattern because he knows he won't be ready to throw early, and then when he gets a major off there, he comes back low and makes the catch. The receiver has to know when it's a bootleg because he's got more time to work on his defender. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 24-yard line. 
Wide open is Jeff Ventram, and he will be close to another first down. What an interesting story Ventram is. Until he was moved into a starting spot back position, he had never run a pass pattern at uh, professional football level. Now let's bring in Scott O. Well, Don, if you want to be fashionable and dress for the weather, you go and get yourself a pair of glass cutters gloves. Every one of the Saskatchewan receivers has followed the lead of Jeff Fairholm, has brought them up from the States, and wearing them as well is linebacker Dave Albright. The big advantage they find about them is they've got a sort of a tackiness about them that'll let you hang on to the ball if you get close to it. It's intercepted in the end zone by Hopkins. Pass intended for Jeff Bentram, and the Stat Peters had double coverage. And they come up with the Hopkins interception with 1.36 left in the quarter. Watch. Only one of the... Well, Ron Hopkins has had a definite impact on this football game with an interception and a fine kickoff return. And the Calgary Stampeders, leading by three points, take over first and ten at the 25-yard line. Good cornerback. Never takes his eyes off the quarterback. Wide receiver on a quick out. He watches the quarterback. When he lays that ball up, he cuts in front of the guy going deep for the interception. Good, good play. Good fake by Barrett as he dumps it off to Andy McVay. McVay brings it out to the 43-yard line. Excellent fake by Barrett as he throws everybody at the line of scrimmage. And drops that ball off to McVay, who's wide open in the flat. That's the guy that John Gregory was telling us about before the game. A year or so ago, he ran wild up here. But there's the fake. Look how much time he's got. Now, McVay, get that ball into the arm. He's going to pick up a good block right here. And now he just gets the thing upfield. First down, and the Stampeders are moving. First and 10, Calgary. The ball at the 43-yard line. 47 seconds remaining in the quarter. Another good fake by Barrett. This time, he overthrows Larry Willis. And it will be second and 10. Barrett has done a good job of faking the run and then dropping back and throwing the ball. I think that's what Coach Geharic likes about him. Danny Barrett will, if you're going to have a run fake, sell the run. You must sell the run. you got to put the ball into the back. Let them see you put the ball in. Then when you take it away, that freezes the linebackers. A lot of times quarterbacks don't do that, and those linebackers ignore them and drop right back. I like that expression, sell the run. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have definitely been buying. Yeah, you got to sell it. If you want those guys to bite, you got to put that ball in. It, it always helps. Like, if you go back to when I played, I didn't have a bad guy to fake to, but George <laughs> Reed could run. If you put the ball there, they knew they had to tackle him, and that helped me. It helps the line. It helps everybody, and that's what Danny Barrett's doing. I think your expression, not having a bad guy to fake to, <laughs> might be the understatement of all time. 11 1,000-yard rushing seasons for George Reed. Well, there's also a thing they try to do here is bring bring the back out in motion. Try to get that linebacker to move out. If he moves out, then you hit that trap and go inside. But Eddie Lowe had none of it. The way he run the trap, he steps up and makes the hit. Brent Maddich stands at his own 30-yard line for this third down punt. This should be the final play of the opening quarter. Richie Hall waits for it. Richie Hall gets a block. Maddich slows him up, and then Palumbo finishes the job over in front of that Saskatchewan bench. And that is the final play of the opening quarter. Calgary leads by three. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC. Well, this is the 27th time that Calgary and Saskatchewan are meeting in the playoffs. Interestingly enough, the first time since 1977, that was the last year that Calgary won the Grey Cup. Donald Narcisse, the intended receiver, he is well overthrown by I Ken Austin. Sure I love you. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Well, everyone is very pleased that you are all right after that rather nasty incident last week in Edmonton, Richie. And it was Brent Maddich who may have prevented a touchdown return by Richie Hall on this punt. Boy, he picked him up. He had three good blocks made, and he made the most of them. He kept going across that field till he found an opening. When he got that last block, inside he went. That's the way a good punt return has to move. Think of getting upfield. 
Second and 10 from the 51. Austin's pass intended for Narcisse intercepted. And it is Junior Thurman heading for the end zone. Will he get there? No, he's wrestled out of bounds. McCray stops Junior Thurman from going all the way as he was alert to grab the deflection off the fingertips of Donald Narcisse. Boy, that's excellent coverage by um, Chris Major. He held with Narcisse. Narcisse couldn't get the hands on it. He don't, don't use your hands. It bounces off the shoulder pad up in the air. Thurman takes the advantage of it, picks it out of the air, and away he goes. You know right now when you take your middle safety and man coverage and take him all the way over to Narcisse, they're worried about Narcisse. They double covered him with the free safety. 50 yards on that return for Junior Thurman. 14.04 remaining in the second quarter. First and 10 as the pitch goes to Kennard Martin. <laughs> And he is stopped at the 17-yard line. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe he picked up a yard. He didn't get too much. Good pursuit by the Saskatchewan defense down the line of scrimmage. Force that back to cut in with a football, and then that pursuit gets him. Watch, there goes McVay. He's going out to make the block. Martin can't get outside. Watch number 99 coming from the inside. Chuck Klingbeil again. And he's a ton. Second and nine. Barrett to the sideline. Penalty flag on the play. Zeno makes the catch and will have a first down depending on this penalty call. I think it's going against Calgary. Likely a holding violation. Penalties will hurt you. you know, they kill drives. And when you kill drive, it takes points off the board. Holding. Calgary number 61. Second down repeat. Tom Spalatini guilty of the holding call. And this Calgary team was the least penalized in the CFL this season. But it's penalties like that that will really get a coach such as Larry Kaharick upset. Yeah, they'll upset you. You know, the quarterback and the receiver get together, make a first down, and bang, you got to lose it in not only that, but not second and 20. There it comes right back for Marshall Turner. This one is intercepted in the end zone. Harry Skipper grabs the deflection and he's still on his feet looking for some blocking help. Look out! He needs some help! I think he's simply going to run out of gas down at the 12 yard line. Well, he ran forever. That was a heck of a play. I thought Marshall Turner was going to make the catch. And Harry Skipper ran about eight miles. No, he ran out of gas. An exhausted Harry Skipper has just revived the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with a 100-yard interception return. We're cap. Hello, Candy. That 100-yard interception return by Harry Skipper, the second longest in playoff history. Greg Peterson of Calgary holds the record, 106 yards, November 15th, 87. Well, Matt Finley was there to make the tackle, forced Tim McRae back into the middle. Backside linebacker will make it. Let's watch Harry Skipper. Now, we said Marshall Toner's got a bad shoulder. I don't know, but the ball goes right through his hands, whether he couldn't get the hands up high enough or what. Let's see what happens. Right through his hands, and Skipper makes the interception. Now he starts everywhere. He runs everywhere he can run. But almost a touchdown, and it ends up as a turnover. And now the Stamp uh, Stampeders are in trouble. So is Kent Austin. Finally, he picks out a receiver incomplete. He was looking for Milson Jones. But Austin was fortunate that he was not dropped for a loss as he was sidestepping pursuers in that Saskatchewan backfield. You know what, Don? All right, let's take a look at it. Just flips off the hands. Now when Skipper starts upfield, he gets to the left. Watch the number of red jerseys that are going to be around him on the sideline. I can't believe he came back against the grain and escaped all of them. I thought it was all over right there for Harry Skipper. And had he followed Bobby Jurison here, I think he may have gone all the way. You'll see Jurison just up there at the top of the screen, but he decided to cut back and then was run down. Field goal attempt by David Ridgeway is good, but there are penalty flags on the play. The whistle had gone prior to the ball being snapped. It's an offside call against Calgary. Now, this will not give Saskatchewan a first down, so 
with that successful field goal, they're going to decline the penalty. They're going you to betcha. take the three points. Offside, Calgary number two, declined field goal. Good call. I mean, they didn't get them the first down. They would have still been about two yards short, Don. They'd have had to try it again. Don't take the points off the board when it doesn't give you the first down in close. Well, I remember when Bud Grant was coaching the Winnipeg Blue Bombers back in my first years of calling CFL football in the early 60s. He once told me that you take points whenever they're presented. You know, I've, I have to admit, I've played in some games where I've taken points off the board and then it's hurt. You know, and you don't do things like that. As you say, points or points. Well, what's the problem? I don't they're know. going they... to re-kick. Sure are. I don't know what's going on. You can take part in the excitement 89 for most of the fashion. They're still two yards kick. short. Now, Over the whistle had sounded prior to that right. ball being kicked. That, that, that probably perhaps is, is the reason that Ridgeway will re-kick. Is he still out there? Now they're putting the ball back. They didn't take the penalty. One of Saskatchewan declined the penalty so that you get the better angle to kick. The ball's back to the original line of scrimmage. They had marked off five yards. I think they declined it. Didn't want the five yards because the whistle had blown. Ridgeway once again puts it through to tie the game at six with 11-11 remaining in this first half. Well, you think about what John Gregory said. They must finish drive. Now, Harry Skipper goes 100 yards and gets them down inside that 20, inside the 15-yard line. They have to kick a field goal. The other end, same thing. They could not finish him. He said, if we finish our drives, we'll win the football game. You know, a lot of people have been talking about the last time these two teams met in a playoff encounter, referring to that 1971 series when the West was decided in a best-of-three affair. That year, Calgary won in two straight games. People have confused 1970 with 1970, the year that Larry Robinson kicked a field goal in the game's final play into a howling blizzard in Saskatchewan for a 15-14 Calgary win. You remember that game, don't you? I remember that one, and I don't remember 71 at all. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what happened. I know I'll never forget that. I don't know why you remember games you lose. You know, why don't you remember the ones you won? Because we won a lot of them. Well, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders remember that year because they had a record of 14-2 and two that season. Calgary and Edmonton that year were both 9-7. and seven. Bernard Martin on the kickoff return, brought down by Dan Rashevich, close to the 40-yard line, a 22-yard run back. Well, next Sunday, we'll be at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton for the Eastern Final, the Tiger Cats, entertaining the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, 30-7 victors this afternoon over the Toronto Argonauts in the Eastern Semifinal. And we hope to have Mike Riley at halftime on today's telecast to talk about that victory as well as taking a look at some of the highlights of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers' first victory in their last eight games. Mark Zeno was the target of quarterback Danny Barrett. He was covered by Harry Skipper. Motions running high as one would expect when teams are playing each other for the fifth time in a season and the fourth time in six weeks. You bet, and that was excellent coverage. These two teams yesterday, a lot of talk in the paper and on television places about the dislike for one another and how rough this game's going to get. Harry Skipper, as a defensive back, is a gambler. He gambled right then on Zeno, and he won the battle. Come up and knocked it down. That's a heck of a play by Skipper. Second and 10 from the 40-yard line. This one is intercepted by Albright. Well, we talked at the start of our telecast how important David Albright was to the Saskatchewan defensive scheme. What a big turnover he provides for the green and white. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC. Well, the 6'2", 235-pound product of San Jose State is kind of the quiet man of that Saskatchewan defense, but he leads by example. You know, the strange thing here is John Gregory told us today in the locker room, he says that we really like him against the run. Well, he shows it on when Danny Barrett lifted that ball. He really got back underneath that pass. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Austin throws to the sidelines. Donald Narcisse steps out of bounds. And that should be another Saskatchewan first down. You know, five of six Saskatchewan possessions have started in what you refer to as plus territory on the opposition side of midfield from the 43, 34, 52, 12, 
and following that Albright interception from the 30, and yet they've only got six points. Well, that goes right back to what John Gregory told us, right? If we can't finish our drive, and heck, half the drive's made for you when you start down here, they need to get it to the end zone. First and 10 from the 18. Austin throwing for Narcisse again. He went high to make the catch, stripped of the football by Chris Major, but they're going to rule that he made the reception at the... 11 yard line on the play before Don Narcisse went down the field on major ran a double out which means he went to the sideline started deep into the outside this time he curls to the inside that is a heck of a catch again a high ball that he is able to pull down and keep major from knocking away 941 remaining in the half 6-6 six, six, Saskatchewan and Calgary in this Western semifinal the winner will face the Edmonton Eskimos next Sunday at Commonwealth Stadium Big hole for McRae to the three-yard line for a Saskatchewan first down. It will be first and goal for the Rough Riders. This power off tackle. That offensive line blocked down, kick the outside man out and give it to a guy like McRae, and he just runs straight ahead. He doesn't know any different. He never dodges. When Once he goes upfield, he goes straight to the goal line. He's got down to around the three-yard line. Doug Landry made the tackle, and he is the Calgary player who is down. And if he is forced out of the ball game, this will be a definite blow for the Stampeders. At the start of our telecast, we suggested that Landry would start, but the major concern of the Stampeders is whether he would finish. Well, Coach Guharic made that point yesterday. He says, we're not worried about who starts. we got to know who's going to finish. Doug Landry even made the same statement in a local paper. He said, I don't know how long I can go. The consensus is when you have a shoulder that's beat up like his is, you take on a couple shots real quick, and it's going to finish you for the day. And right now, he's still down. Let's take a look and see if he, what he does. All right, there's McCray. Landry takes the hit and lands on it on his left shoulder, and then McCray and Junior Thurman come down on top of him. Well, you know, if it's at all possible, Doug Landry is going to be in the ball game. I think Doug's going to have to go out and, you know, let that pain go away and come back in if he's going to. But it's it's tough for a guy to come in. You know, it's a tough for a guy to play when you're hurting a little bit. And weather's cold. That hurt hurts a little bit more and a little bit longer. Well, it's first and goal for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Calgary will be without their starting middle linebacker. Vernell Quinn moves into the ball game to take his spot. Landry a little wobbly as he heads off to the sidelines. The Rough Riders at the Calgary three-yard line with 9.08 on the clock running in the first half with the score tied at six. Tim McRae gets the ball stopped at about the one-yard line. Went to the left side first on the other play, got the first down. Now here they go down to the one-yard line on the second down. Brian Walling was the lead back that time. McCray tried to go over the top, just didn't make it. It will be second and goal, Saskatchewan. This is where that offensive line gains momentum, Don. When you can win the battle up front in short yardage situation, a lot of confidence building. Three running backs. Tim McCray, the ball carrier. He's in. Stan Peters protesting to the official who raised his arms. Larry Koharik didn't like the call, but apparently Tim McRae broke the plane. All you gotta do is break the plane. All, the, all you see really is him come flying out of there. But what we have to know is how far his forward momentum got him. You see the hit, Matt Finley, Finley Eugene Bellabo, Junior Thurman, they're all there. But evidently McRae got it across that last line, and that's all that matters. The whistle goes as Ridgeway attempts the point after. And again, that whistle had blown before the ball was kicked. And the reason there is an injured Calgary player. Dan Wicklam is down. Wicklam primarily working on special teams for the Calgary Stampeders. At the start of the year, there was the question of whether or not he would ever play again in the Canadian Football League. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers left him unprotected because of the injury he suffered late last year. Calgary Stampeders took a chance, signed him to a contract. He returned to the lineup and 
primarily has worked on those special teams. He has a knee problem and he also handles the snapping chores for the Stampeders on field goal situations. Saw an interview with him very early in the season, you know, when he made his comeback and it kind of surprised a lot of people. He said, if I didn't give it the chance, I might regret it the rest of my life. He said, I'm going to do what I can, and if I don't, that's okay. Here goes McCray. Let's see where he goes. Again, we see him fly out of there, but you can't see that last line. But the referee on the side, it's his job to watch the line, and if the ball breaks the plane, he signals touchdown. So Ridgeway will attempt the point after. 8.26 remaining. And without much difficulty, he puts it through as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have the lead for the first time in the ball game. 13-6 over the Calgary Stampeders with 8.26 remaining in the half. Well, coming into the game, Don, we thought for sure, the way we talked about it, we knew Saskatchewan would move the football in Calgary. The key would be whether Calgary could move the football. Now, they've had their chances. If you think back, that holding penalty that cost the Calgary Stampeders the first down, down in, inside the 10-yard line, the very next down, an interception by Harry Skipper. So, you know, you just can't turn the ball over because of penalties. Scott? Well, Don, the elements may be a factor at McMahon Stadium today, given the temperature, but they were not in Toronto earlier as the Argos and Bombers played the East semifinal indoors in the Sky Dome, and the Bombers, of course, ended that seven-game losing streak with victory. 37, the final score at halftime, and inside the CFL will go to Toronto for key plays. We'll hear live from the victorious head coach, Mike Riley, at halftime. And I think, Scott, it's safe to assume that you will enjoy that indoor facility for the breakup game. Hopkins on the kickoff return up to the 48-yard line. That's the second big return for Hopkins. He had one of 47 yards earlier. This he runs back 30 yards. And he's given the Stampeders great field position, and that's what the game's all about. Catches it near the sidelines. All his blockers are heading to midfield. He start up field to hold the defense and then try to get to the wall. Gets cut inside, but number 77 is going to come over. Going to make the hit. Wayne Drinkwalder, and down he goes. Marshall Toner and Zeno go wide left. First and 10 Calgary from the 48-yard line. Kennard Martin coming out of the backfield, but it's intercepted by Bobby Jurison. Did he read that play? He spotted Kennard Martin trying to sneak out of the backfield. He simply dropped back about two steps and was right in the path of the throw from Danny Barrett to the running back. Screen pass. All Martin wants to do is hit Jurison, slip out behind him, get the blockers in front of him and run. Jurison's smart. He felt him trying to get away. When he left, he dropped right back in it. Look where it ends up. Right in his hands. A heck of a job by Jurison. So again, now you talk about field position. They're at the 32-yard line. The Riders are making a habit of gaining possession inside the Calgary half of midfield. Wilson Jones taking that swing pass out of the backfield, stopped at the 30 for a gain of about one. And you see who's back in the ball game. Number 39, Tank Landry is back. So it's good to see. You know that it's going to hurt. He's just got to keep coming back. That figure to the right of the column is the one that has to be of concern to both Danny Barrett and Larry Kaherick. Three interceptions in eight attempts. That interception born is completed. That's not a good day. on second down throwing to the sidelines and that is a first down with Donald Narcisse rolling into the snowbanks that line McMahon Stadium they had snow in Calgary on Friday they had more last night and yesterday the Canadian Junior Final was played here at McMahon Stadium and we extend our congratulations to the Calgary Colts 23-6 victors over the Burlington Ticats yeah, there's the snow that we saw, but the amazing thing is look how dry and clear the field is. It's been clear all day, but that sun came out, sort of just dried everything up. Boy, Don Narcisse is having a heck of a game over there in a battle with Chris Major. He gets that one-on-one -on -one coverage, and, and Narcisse is so confident now, he just seems to be able to get that step when he needs it, and when he gets that step, Austin gets him the ball. You know, we saw that snow. It can disappear just as quickly as it accumulates when a Chinook blows in. And that temperature can rise 35 or 40 degrees inside of a couple of hours. It's short of a first down. It's third and one. And the Rough Riders are going to gamble with 6.56 remaining in the half. 
Saskatchewan in front by seven points. Kent Austin keeps. He's inside the 20-yard line for a rough rider first down. Yeah, they took Tank Landry out of the ballgame, put Dan Wicklin in at the outside, moved Matt Finley into the middle. That's kind of a tough job to move a guy inside. Now Landry will come back in, but again, they made the first down, and that's key for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. First and 10 Saskatchewan from the 20-yard line. The Riders have dominated since that first Saskatchewan drive, or Calgary drive, when they recovered the fumble by Tim McRae. Austin throwing into the end zone, incomplete. And Donald Narcisse is quite upset with Chris Major, protesting to the official that he was interfered with. But there is no fire. Well, let's take a look at it. Mo Waters got him on ice. So Narcisse is going to go down the sideline again. One-on-one -on -one with Major. All right, the ball's in the air. Narcisse stops. Major stops. Could have been an interference call if they want to throw the flag. Narcisse thought so. <laughs> Chris Major thought he was just playing good defense. Hey, that's good defense. He doesn't get called. It's no touchdown. That's the big thing. Second and 10 from the 20-yard line. Drop one. Milson Jones will be very close to a Saskatchewan first down. What was nice there is the way Austin came out from center. Three receivers to the wide side. He steps back. He fakes the pass and then slips it underneath the Brian Walling, and Walling finds the hole inside. I apologize. I was looking for Milson Jones in there and Brian Walling into the ball game. A late addition to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as the Riders were able to take him off the Edmonton Eskimo practice roster. And he runs down to the ten and a half yard line. It will be third and one. Tim McRae has the first down inside the ten. 5.25 remaining in the first half. Just made it. He fell forward across that line. And that lunge by McRae got him the first down. He had to get across the white line. Top of your screen. He gets hit. There. Just falls over. They put the ball down. First down inside the 10 again. 13-6 is the score. John Gregory, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Winners of three of four regular season games. Leading the Stampeders. First and goal from inside the 10. Tim McRae inside the five. With those three receivers out wide, start rolling that way, and then Tim McCray just gets in behind that offensive line. In that case, it's Bob Poley and Vic Stevenson, and he reads their block. All he does, whichever way they block their man, he goes the other way, and that time he turned inside, picked up about five yards. A lot of work already in this ball game for Tim McCray. Walling comes in. Nelson Jones goes out for Saskatchewan. Tim McRae gets the call, touchdown! Excellent job up front. Anderson, Foley, all day, Warren Stevenson. All they do is fire out, hit the nearest stampede to them, drive them off the ball, and let a good running back that Tim McRae is, he will do the rest. He'll find the hole, and he went in standing up. After a shaky start, created by that man, Tim McRae, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have taken control of this football game. Yeah, they have. They've, they've been able to get some turnovers. They've been able to make the plays when they've had to have them. Narcisse has made the second down catches for them, and they've put it in the end zone. The point after by David Ridgway. Saskatchewan leads by 14. We'll be back with the Rider kickoff after this. Well, Tim McRae has very much been a factor in the Rough Riders building a 20-6 advantage with 4.23 remaining in the first half. And Ron Hopkins will attempt another return for the Stampeders, hoping for big yardage again, which he gets. Seems like Ron Hopkins gets some yards on the kickoff return, and they either turn it over or don't go any farther. But that's, you know, he's doing a heck of a job returning kickoffs. 47-yard return, a 30-yard run back, and this for 38 yards. Well, they got to get this ball down the field. So we say, just fire off, hit the closest guy to you, then let Tim McCray run. You saw Mike Anderson drive his man right across. McCray cut right in behind it. That's what it's all about. 
First and 10 Calgary from the Saskatchewan 53. The pitch is to Kennard Martin. And out of bounds he goes, but not before he rips it all the way to the Saskatchewan 32-yard line. Well, trailing 20 to 6, you gotta you gotta make a decision. The Stampeders came in wanting to run the football. They hadn't done it yet, and they hadn't moved the football very well. This time, get the ball to Kennard Martin outside. A good job, and he gets turned up the corner. Now he's just gonna run till they knock him out of bounds or something. But that's what they have to do. Don't get away from your game plans too early. Out of North Carolina. He'd be in his junior year of college had he not been forced to sit out because of academic inconsistencies. And he's inconsistent as a ball carrier as well. A big run of 22 yards. And that time he slips right at the line of scrimmage. They had him pretty well pegged trying to get outside. Come back with the same play just the other way. So that's Tom Porras, the quarterback that's not dressed today, talking to Coach Merrick on the sidelines. But the big thing is now they're into the second and ten situations. This is when that Saskatchewan front four can get after him. Danny Barrett has to convert it. 3-11 is the time remaining. Tom Forrest looks on. Danny Barrett directs the attack. Second and 10. Stan Peters need a play here. I'd like to get a touchdown before they go to the dressing room, and they may if they can keep firing strikes like that to Brock Smith. Well, that was a good job by Barrett. They brought Glenn Suter up like a blitz, and then they bring him right in where he leaves. 2.53 remains in the half. This is Foster's CFL on CBC. At Toronto Sky Dome recently, CFL President Bill Baker received the War Amps place. Brock Smith's initial reception of the afternoon gives Calgary a first to 10 from the 15 yard line. Been down in this neighborhood before, but that Harry Skipper interception ruined the scoring drive. Andy McVay pulls his way inside the 10. Set McVay off like he was sitting out there on that play before when he led on that toss sweep. This time he sits out wide and in. All that Danny Barrett does is open and step back inside and hits right up the middle. Gets good yards inside. Lorenzo Graham and Tim Petras, who have done most of the work on the ground this year for the Stampeders, are both out of the lineup as the result of injuries. So Kennard Martin and Andy McVay are in. It's second and three Calgary in the nine-yard line. Barrett won't get a chance to throw. It's Lewis up the middle onto the Calgary quarterback before he could even get set. Well, he was going to play action, fake to McVay right up the middle, and then he was going to play action off of it. He got fooled. Gary Lewis came hard on an inside charge. Watch how fast he's in Danny Barrett's face. A quarterback has no chance. You know, you need three steps to throw it, not two. Watch him coming. There he is. Nobody touches him. And the, what the problem is, is McVay can't get up there quick enough because he's got a play action fake, so he can't go up there and stand. And that man, Gary Lewis, runs right over him. Well, the Stampeders will attempt a field goal of 22 yards, and McLaughlin puts it through. With two minutes remaining in the half, cutting the Saskatchewan lead to 11 points. But the Stampeders really wanted a touchdown. They wanted to get into the end zone before they head to the dressing room at halftime. That was a big offensive series for the Stampeders. They moved the ball a little bit. Kennard and Martin made a run. They hit a second down, 10 situation. But when you get down there, it's a big one because you're trailing 20 to 6. Put that in the end zone. You're only down 7 going in at halftime. Well, Gary Lewis coming right up the middle, as you saw on the replay, to jump on Danny Barrett before he could even get set. Now it's first and 10. Kent Austin at the controls of the Saskatchewan attack from the 35-yard line. Throwing it over the middle to Tim McRae. He gets one block. And Tim McRae is up to the 49-yard line. First and 10, Saskatchewan. That's a game of 14. One-on-one, man-to-man -on -one -man coverage. They go to Narcisse outside. He beats Major, and they make first downs. This time, if we take a look at this, watch McRae now. You'll see the linebackers drop back. McRae comes underneath, so it's a zone. Now he does what he does best, split the two defenders. He gets a good block, and he's got a first and 10. But this... Kent Austin is going to get things going again like he did in that last time we were here, Don. Man on man, he beats him outside. Zone, he goes inside. Well, Tim McRae has been 
definite factor for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, both as a runner and pass receiver this afternoon. David McCrary is the injured Calgary Stampeder. It looked as though his fumble recovery on the six-yard line in the opening kickoff might give the Calgary Stampeders a big lift and propel them into the lead with a major score early that many, I'm sure, were hoping, as far as Calgary fans are concerned, would be the incentive they needed for a victory. But uh, that has not been the case. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have come back. A reminder at halftime, we'll be taking a look at the highlights of the Eastern semifinal, Winnipeg 30, Toronto 7. Ken Daniels will be talking with the victorious coach, Mike Riley, coach of the year in the Canadian Football League a year ago, about that victory and upcoming plans for the Eastern Final at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton next Sunday. A game we'll have for you on CBC Television. Yeah, you, know, you think of the Edmonton Eskimos sitting up there, you know. Most teams will say they don't care really who they play because Eskimos come in with a 16-2 and record. But the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have beaten Edmonton this year. And I know they'd like nothing better than to go up there and, you know, have another field day. I think it's possible. I think anything's <laughs> possible in this game. Scott? Well, Don, as you and Ron well know, there are a lot of players in this game walking the fine line between injury list and the spot on the roster. Tank Landry's one of them. I asked him a few moments ago if his shoulder, which is separated, is hurting him. He said simply, I'm in bad pain and I can't lift it any higher than uh, shoulder height, which is to say he's not a candidate for interceptions today, but punishing hits, of course, are another story. He says he'll last the game any way he has to. Well, he'll definitely try and stay out there, but there are times when a player is injured that he can hurt a team as much as help. Yeah, if, if, if you can't do the job that's required by that particular position, then you shouldn't be there. And if he can't come up and hit the way Tank Landry knows how, and he can't get back and get those hands up and knock passes down, he may hurt him. I think they want him out there because of his inspiration. And the fact that he led the CFL in tackles. It's second and five. Austin tried to dump it off. It was deflected by Will Johnson right at the line of scrimmage. He dumped the ball a little bit quicker. McCray was open, but he allowed Will Johnson to get into that backfield. And again, six foot five, he gets up high and bats it away. David McCrary, the injured Calgary defensive back, being treated on the Calgary bench. You'll see Will Johnson get a hand up there. See, McCray wasn't looking. The reason Austin pulled it down is he went to throw it. McCray wasn't looking, so he had to reload. And when he Prairie, the injured Calgary defensive back, being treated on the Calgary bench. You'll see Will Johnson get a hand up there. See, McCray wasn't looking. The reason Austin pulled it down is he went to throw it. McCray wasn't looking, so he had to reload, and when he reloaded, that allowed Johnson to get up. Terry Baker was having a good rest on the Saskatchewan bench. This is the first time he's punted today. Well, all he has to do now is come in and kick it deep. They'll be happy. He angles it towards the sidelines. It's not a long kick. As a matter of fact, it bounces back towards the line of scrimmage. Out of bounds at the 32. I think after that, they'll hope he rests a little bit longer <laughs> over there. <laughs> Only a 24-yard kick for Terry Baker. One fourteen is the time remaining. Stan Peters desperately want to try and put more points on the board before going to the dressing room. Well, Danny Barrett has at least even his completions and interceptions. Big rush by Steve Crane, but he gets away, and now Barrett is going to run for a first down. Forced out of bounds, up at the 43. That's athletic ability. I'll tell you what, they had that blitz showing. They got everybody up, and Crane comes unblocked. Watch Danny Barrett. He knows he got to step inside it. If he can get outside, he's going to have a lot of room. He also knows that. He goes down the field and heads to the sidelines without taking a hit. That's a good play by Danny Barrett. That's where you have to have a lot of confidence in your offensive line. When you see that guy coming from the outside and you step inside. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you're going to step inside. You're going to step someplace, but the offensive line did the job for him that time. First and ten from the 42 and a half. This one is almost intercepted by Steve Wiggins. It was well over the head of Rock Smith. It will be second and 10, 103 remaining in the half. Well, you see Wiggins out there. He sees the receiver and the ball in the air. He's trying to arrive at the receiver the same time the ball does to try to cause an incompletion. But that ball was overthrown, and he just couldn't adjust to it when it was in the air. But 
He really doesn't care. There was no completion either. Wiggins playing that cornerback position in place of the injured Albert Brown. Second and 10, 10 Calgary from the 42-yard line. Zeno tried to run before he had possession of that football, and it's third and 10 Calgary. They look like they have to punt this football with a minute left. You don't take too many chances here. Down 20 to 9. Now the key is don't go in by giving up any more points. Brent Maddich. Stands at his 27-yard line for this third down kick. He and Bob Cameron are in a duel for the title of leading CFL punter in this 1989 season. Matic won it. I think they're going to take a delay of game penalty because they don't have enough people out there. They're one short on that punting team. And they're going to let that 20-second clock run down. Time count violation, Calgary number four, third down repeated. Now this could be the result of that injury earlier to David McCrary because he works on those special teams and as a result, whoever is expected to take his spot wasn't ready to go out there. Yeah, you know, you tell those guys on the bench, you know, the backups and on special teams, you're on one team, either the starter or the backup. You always got to stay in the game and this time it cost them five yards. I don't believe this. They attempted. A direct snap to Andy McVeigh, a third down gamble. I don't believe it either. Third and 20. And they attempted a direct snap to Andy McVeigh. And then Brett Maddich, with a futile attempt at getting the ball, throwing a pass out into the flat to well, the Ball snapped too high for McVeigh. Maddich just gets rid of it, and Spalatini was in the area, so the intentional grounding is out. But the big thing is they're going to give up more points before, before halftime, and you cannot afford to do that. Well, Larry Koharik has uh, gambled in some unusual situations in the past, but on third and 20 in the first half, with the score 20 to 9 in favor of Saskatchewan, I don't agree. Tim McRae brought down by Matt Finlay and Eugene Bellavo at the 29-yard line. It will be second and eight Calgary, or Saskatchewan. Ball in the middle of the field, 51 seconds left. He still has time to throw the football and maybe get a touchdown out of this, but the big thing is they want points. Austin has been intercepted twice today, but he's also completed 13. Oh, here comes McCrary on that halfback blitz. And he forced Austin to step inside, and there were people waiting for him. Mitchell Price being one of them, along with Kent Warner. Well, you can see him coming from a long way. He didn't sneak up to the inside. Watch, he's coming from outside of the screen. He forces him to step up, and now Warnock's there to make the sack. A safety blitz didn't get him, but it caused the sack, and now Ridgeway has to attempt the field goal. Warnock. Even though he did not start all games this season, was the Calgary leader in quarterback sacks. Ridgeway is attempting a 47-yard field goal. It is good. So that gamble backfires for the Calgary Stampeders because they relinquish three more points on a David Ridgeway field goal. It's 23-9 with 10 seconds remaining in the half. I think they'll make him kick off. I mean, Hopkins has had success. He may go the distance on one. But I think with 10, se 10 seconds left, Saskatchewan's not going to kick the ball to Hopkins. They're going to, I'd kick it straight down the middle of the field on the ground, anything. But don't kick it to Hopkins. We congratulated the Calgary Colts on winning the Canadian Junior Championship yesterday. We should all also offer congratulations to the Saskatchewan Huskies. 40 to 10 winners over the Queen's Golden Gales and the Churchill Bowl. And the Western Ontario Mustangs, 38-33 over the St. Mary's Huskies in the Atlantic Bowl. They'll meet on Saturday at the Sky Dome in Toronto in the Vanier Cup. Yeah, Brian Towers at U of S and Larry Haler at Western. Outstanding seasons. Get a chance. We'll go watch that, time. What do you think? I think we might sneak over to the Sky Dome on Saturday <laughs> afternoon to watch that Vanier Cup. You were absolutely correct. They squibbled along the ground, keeping it away from Hopkins. Bernard Martin. 
on the return to the 40-yard line with four seconds remaining in the first half. A 14-yard run back for Kennard Martin. On the run back, he gets about 14 yards to the 39. Dan Rasovich, the linebacker, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, good special teams player. Just kind of get down there, keep him in your sights, don't let him get anything going. Finally, he comes back to you. You hope he'll come back to you. Well, <laughs> he's not in your lane, but you know, you just keep on. If he cuts back, you make the tackle. This he breaks, should, if he breaks it, you're in trouble. This should be the final play of the half. Three receivers wide to the left. The pass is complete to Larry Willis, but he is going to be stopped at the midfield stripe. And that is the end of the first half at McMahon Stadium with Saskatchewan in front, 23 to 9. We're in Calgary, Saskatchewan, leading the Stampeders 23-9 at the half, and welcome to... Traffic accident, but it's one of the most... Since 1909, the Grey Cup has rewarded gridiron excellence. And for more than three decades, the heroes and the moments which have made the game great have been captured and brought home to Canadians by CBC Television. A legacy of quality broadcasting, capped each November by the showdown for the national title. On November 26, share the memories once more. CBC Sports and the Grey Cup, a championship team. <laughs> I understand why the Stampeders were 7-0-0 zero and zero when they were able to rush for 175 yards or more. They've been able to run for only 46 yards so far in this ballgame. Their passing statistics aren't a great deal better. But turnovers have definitely been a factor in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders establishing a 23-9 lead. They sure have, and right now, the Calgary Stampeders get the football to start the third quarter. I think it's important for them to come back and establish that they can move the ball and get points and I think they have to start right now. They've switched Kennard Martin and Hopkins. The Rough Riders kick it to Kennard Martin. And Kennard Martin gets a couple of blocks and he runs it back to the 51-yard line. Wayne Drinkwalder put a pretty good hit on Kennard Martin as he was eyeing that distant goal line. What you had to like about the way Martin did that is that he saw the opening. He accelerated to just take off and run. He figures they're going to try to tackle him. He can step out of it. But watch him. He follows the blockers. All right, now he sees the hole. It's just turn it on the Jets and let's go. There's the hit. Wayne Drinkwalder, about 270-pounder, puts a good lick on him to start the third quarter. A 38-yard run back by Martin. Martin trying to get to the outside. He stays in bounds and will pick up maybe three yards directly in front of that Calgary bench. One thing the Calgary Stampeders have to be pleased about, at least their offense, every time they've had to receive a kickoff, have started right around midfield. They've had excellent field position as the result of three fine returns by Hopkins of 47 yards, 30 yards, and 38 yards, and then this run back of 38 yards by Kennard Martin. Second and seven, Calgary. The ball is at the 48 of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The Riders lead it 23-9. A third quarter just underway. Penalty flag as Brock Smith had that ball land well in front of him. And it's a penalty call against Calgary, holding the violation. Referee Ross Perrier in charge of this afternoon's game. Holding Calgary number 66. Decline, third down. Ross and the other members of the officiating crew have asked us to send best wishes for a speedy recovery to former CFL official Floyd Cooper, who is recovering from a heart transplant in London, Ontario. And we echo those sentiments, Floyd. Maddich punting on third down from the 48-yard line. Narcisse on the punt return team. Bounces off a couple of tackles and then goes down at the 22-yard line. 33-yard kick and a 7-yard return by Donald Narcisse. What a year he has had for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I see Dan Wicklum 
makes the snap. Top two now, Al Apati. It must be his man on the kick returner. On this punt return, he's determined that Wickland's not going to get into this play. Was that WWF, or were they concerned about where that football was going? I think Wickland was trying to escape with his life, it looked like. Kent Austin completes the pass. No room for Jeff Fairholm after making the catch. He had Howard Fields on his back immediately. Well, this is what Ken Austin does so well. He can use the short passing game to his advantage as far as keep the drive moving. This time he picks up five yards throwing. So now he's in a position that if he wants to run Tim McCray, Tim McCray has a chance to make that second and five and get him another first down. John Gregory fully realizes his team is far from being home and cooled out. They have to put something together, and he'd like to see them do it on this opening drive. And Tim McCray is going to be wrestled down by Tank Landry at the 31-yard line. He's about a yard short of the first down. Watch Tank Landry make the hit. But watch how he tries to only use one arm in doing it. He delivers a heck of a blow to Tim McCray. Watch it. Get that other arm and get it out of the way in a hurry. That right arm, he doesn't want to use it any more than he has to. I really don't blame him. It's only the second punt of the ball game for Saskatchewan kicker Terry Baker standing at his 15-yard line. He'd like to improve on his first effort of 24 yards. Darcy Kopp waits for it at the 43. And down he goes at the 46-yard line. And as the Calgary offense comes onto the field, let's join Scott Oak. Well, Don, I'm with a man who has got more than a passing interest in this game today. Edmonton quarterback Tracy Hems made the trip to Calgary to watch this semifinal. It looks as though right now Tracy Saskatchewan is the team you'll be playing in the uh, final next week. Your thoughts on that? Well, um, we've played both teams several times, so it, it doesn't really make a difference who we, we play. We've um, prepared to play both of them, and, and uh, we, we're just sitting and waiting. You're surprised Saskatchewan has the upper hand in this game as they do right now? Well, not really. The, the turnovers, you know, anytime you turn the ball over like Calgary's turned the ball over, you can't expect to um, put points on the board, and Saskatchewan's taking advantage of that. What have you learned in this game you'll put to use next week in the final? That is cold out here on this turf. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to go I'm back inside. On grass. <laughs> is that what you're trying to tell hey, me, Tracy? Valerie, yes. want to get back on grass. I want to get back to Edmonton. All right, get out of here. Go back inside. Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> Don? And Scott, you stay down there in the snow, in the cold, on the sidelines. Tracy Ham, Craig Ellis, and Keith Wright, three members of the Eskimos, along with assistant coach Gary Durchick, who made the trip to Calgary for the semifinal playoff encounter. Second and ten, Kennard Martin was stopped right at the line of scrimmage, Saskatchewan showing blitz. Now they back out of it with safety Glenn Suter. Danny Barrett couldn't find a receiver. He was looking initially, I think, for Marshall Toner. He's hauled down by Gary Lewis. Every time Saskatchewan gets in second and long, they've been bringing Glenn Suter up on the outside. Sometimes they blitz him, sometimes they don't. But when he's blitzed, he's had success. This time they drop out of there and double cover. That forces Barrett to pull it down to run. Nowhere to go. He is sacked. Four-man rush again gets to Danny Barrett. Brent Maddich stands at the 32-yard line for this third down punt. 11-23 remaining in the third quarter. Good kick by Maddich. Taken by Richie Hall at the 20-yard line. Fumbles the football. Who's got it? Calgary claims they have the ball. But the officials identify a Saskatchewan player as having possession. 11.07 remains in the third quarter. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC. I'm going to see that. Some members of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders taking advantage of the propane heater that is located behind their bench. Scott, I'd suggest maybe you wander around to the Saskatchewan side of the field if you're worried about the uh, cold down there in the sidelines. Tim McRae stopped at the line of scrimmage. It will be second and ten. Again, the play is made by Mitchell Price, number 74, the defensive tackle. It appeared that Roger Aldag had let up the hole for Tim McRae, and all of a sudden, here comes Mitchell Price underneath submarines to make the tackle. Twenty-three nine, Saskatchewan leads. Second and ten. Throws to the sideline, incomplete. That was a 
good job of coverage that time by Chris Major. Marcis went down the field, broke to the sideline, tried to turn upfield on him. Major got right on his inside and stayed with him step for step. And Austin put it up high, and that caused a heck of a collision with Junior Thurman coming over there. There were two defensive backs over with Narcisse. He had been bumped out of bounds, and even had he caught the ball, I'm sure he would have come down out of bounds. Yeah, I really believe Austin's just throwing that ball away. Get it up high, throw it out of bounds, because that was excellent coverage by Major. Dan Wicklam is down again. The second time that he has been down. What happens? Oh, excellent job by Big Stevenson. Mitchell Price comes up, tries to take the inside, and when you have a quarterback that wants to go outside, that's perfect. Big Stevenson just turfs him, puts him right on his back. Pat Clayton, the Calgary athletic therapist, talking to Dan Wicklam in the first half. He was shaken up down near the goal line as Saskatchewan drove in for a touchdown by Tim McRae. But this time it is not his knee that they are concerned about. He may have taken a hit on the head and appears to be just a little groggy as he heads off to that Calgary bench. Yeah, they got him by the arm. They're leading him off. It's kind of strange when he went down. Everybody was lining up for third down and he went down. Well, that's always a problem. And he didn't remember what he was supposed to do on the play. Low snap to Baker. He manages to field it and get the kick away. Denard Martin on this punt return, wrapped up by Steve Crane and David Albright. Good job of punt coverage. Bad snap. Baker got it on the hop. Got a good kick away. Got it pinned over in, on the sideline so he doesn't have anywhere to run. Lemons at the three-yard return. That's about as good as you can ask for. 9.50 remains in the third quarter. Stampeders have to get something going offensively quite soon. Well, they haven't shown yet. This is the way we thought it would be, whether they can control the football against Saskatchewan's defense. So far, the Saskatchewan defense has won the battle. Barrett decides to roll out of there. He's throwing deep for Willis, or is it Brock Smith? He's got Willis wide open down the sidelines for a big game to the three. Well, this has been one of the things that Calgary has done. We say they don't move the football well, but they hit you with the big plays. This time, 58 yards, a quick sprint. Danny Barrett comes to his left. Willis went down, stopped, and then left. And when he took off, when he stopped, Wiggins took his eyes off of him, and Willis took off behind him. A well-thrown football. And he's tripped up and down around the three-yard line. Larry Willis has picked up more yards receiving in the last three years than any other player in the CFL. Three receptions today for 111 yards. It's first and goal, Calgary. He said they had to try and score quickly. Bernard Martin will not be able to put it in. Well, the first two guys there, 42, Eddie Lowe, 39, Albright. Two linebackers doing a heck of a job. 58 yards on the pass from Danny Barrett to Larry Willis. It will be second and goal from the three-yard line. Well, they didn't gain anything. That was a heck of a shot. Saskatchewan defense put him right at the line of scrimmage. Bernard Martin this time will score. right behind them and run and this time Colombo, Palatini, Peroni they come right off the football and they run Kennard Martin right at him and then again all they do is find a seam he needs two steps he goes in standing up but a good job up front so with that big play from Barrett to Larry Willis and then the three yard touchdown run by Kennard Martin and this point after by Mark McLaughlin puts the Calgary Stampeders right back in the ball game. We'll be back with the Calgary kickoff after this. Well, with that touchdown by Kennard Martin, the Stampeders are right back in the ball game, trailing by a converted touchdown. 
8-12 remaining in the third quarter. I suggested, Ron, that they had to have something happen quickly. It did. Yeah, and this is the way both coaches saw this football game. They thought it was going to be close right till the end. Tim McRae on the kickoff return. He continues fighting all the way out to the 39-yard line. That was a 25-yard run back after a 62-yard kickoff, and that's where Saskatchewan will scrimmage first and 10. Let's take another look at the touchdown set up by a 58-yard pass to Larry Willis. Well, that's a good job. You saw Lloyd Fairbanks down on all fours turning to his outside. That means Dan Peroni, the left guard, drove his man across. So when Kennard Martin starts in behind Spalatini, then he cut right in behind Peroni, and there was a big hole. It's a good job by that interior of that offensive line. First and 10 from the 39. Austin for Fairholm. There's a penalty fly. Gets in the backfield holding against Saskatchewan. We'll wipe out the game. Well, you notice how the crowd has come alive. You know, that touchdown gets things going. The defense seems to be a little more excited. Holding Saskatchewan number 57. First down repeated. Bob Foley guilty of the holding call. Bob. That big mustache is gone. Yeah, that's kind of unusual. I haven't seen him without it, but here it is. Mitchell Price trying to pass rush outside. Get around him. You see that hand up underneath the chin. Flag comes down for holding. Holcat has shaved off the mustache. This time the pass is complete to Donald Narcisse up at the 45-yard line. It will still be about four yards short of a first down, but Narcisse made an excellent catch in traffic. He sure did. As he came to the inside, he had to come around the linebacker. All Austin does is throws it to the open area, and Narcisse has to go get it. Boy, he threw it right in the middle of three of them. That's having confidence in a receiver. When you'll throw it into the middle of three, knowing that that receiver will go in and get it, boy, that really helps the quarterback. Second and four, Saskatchewan. Austin is going down in the grasp of Eugene Bellavoe. Well, it gets the crowd back into the ballgame. That defense come up and did the job that's required. Eugene Bellavo, his best year ever, 10 sacks. But they had the pressure on. Excellent coverage downfield, and that's what allowed Eugene Bellavo to make the sack. Look, he's got time. You see Milson Jones come in to pick up the blitzing linebacker. Austin has nowhere to throw it, and coming from the backside, Bellavo sacks him. There were just too many people coming. Milson Jones took care of one, but they couldn't handle Bellavo. And Terry Baker punts from his own 22-yard line. This is a good punt. Martin waits for it back at the 28. And Steve Crane brings him down at the 43. 6.23 remains in the third quarter. Scott? Well, Don, here on the Calgary bench, some strange goings on with backup linebacker Dan Wicklin. They think he might have taken a shot to the head earlier in the game. It has caused him to become disoriented and forget his assignments. That's why he went down on one knee earlier and uh, came out of the game. He can't remember much right now and will not go back in until they're absolutely certain that he knows where he is and what his assignments are. Well, we heard the comments, Pat Clayton explaining to the coaches what the problem was when Wickliffe came off the field. He said about Wickliffe, he doesn't know what his assignments are. Wiggins is the injured Saskatchewan player. And Ron Lancaster always tells the story about an incident here at McMahon Stadium a few years back when he was playing about a player being asked to identify certain situations. That's right. Down, you know, where they have the red and white room down at the, I guess, the north end of the stadium. They used to have the big hillside there, and it had Calgary right across the middle, and it was very pretty. Bruce Bennett got knocked out one day down here, and the coach wouldn't put him in a game, and so I was off the field because the defense was on. He started asking me why they won't let him play. I said, they won't let you play because you don't know where you're at. I said, where are you? He said, Calgary. I said, how do you know? He said, that's just the right time to build. <laughs> First and 10, Calgary from the 43-yard line. Bernard Martin struggles up to the 50. I've heard that story several times, and you're getting better at telling it each time, too. <laughs> practice. Like, again, that's the Saskatchewan defense there. He's got Suter up on the front line again, showing Blitz, but there's Albright. When a big tackle like Fairbanks comes through to block a linebacker, you do that thing. Get down low, make him miss. You take on the blocker, let somebody else make the tackle. Willis and Brock Smith go wide to the left. 
Again, Saskatchewan showing blitz with Suter. Here he comes. But they go up the middle looking for that first down, and they won't get it. Well, you're going to bring a blitz on the outside, in that case, Glenn Suter. Everybody on the inside is going to come down on a hard charge to the inside. That way, if they do pass, Suter has a straight shot. If you try to run, this is what's going to happen to you. You see Suter on the blitz. Everybody comes down hard. So when you come down hard, you're going to get a lot of pursuit. They make the tackle. The big thing is, if you ever hit that just right, you're gone. You'll be through. But that time, a great job by the Saskatchewan defense. They're almost a couple of yards short of a first down. And they are going after it. Larry Koharik, who gambled earlier in the ball game on third and 20. And not unexpectedly, he is going after it on third and two. The key's going to be, what is he going to run to get it? That is uh, two yards. This is a big, big play for him. It's definitely more than one. Kennard Martin has got it. Five oh six remains in the third quarter. First down, Calgary. As Larry Koharik gambled again and gets the first down. Just a yard shy of midfield. Good job, too, up front. Good job of blocking Andy McVeigh at the left halfback position. The lead blocker blocks the first opposite color jersey he finds, and then Martin just follows him into the hole. Willis and Brock Smith go wide left. Barrett gets away. Now decides to run with the ball. He was indicating to Mark Zeno to head downfield, and Zeno started to come back to the quarterback. What he wanted to do is if Zeno runs downfield, the defender has to go with him, and he can just run down the sideline and follow him. But the pursuit of the defensive front is what made Barrett go out of bounds. You'll see Barrett, as he heads to the sidelines, motion to Zeno with his hand, get downfield. And you don't notice too many times Bobby Jerson lets you escape. And he motions him downfield. He just could not run Glenn Suter. If he gets by Suter, he just follow him all the way down the field. Second and two, Calgary. Hand off inside to McVay. He's got a first down to the 44. Well, we said it's starting the third quarter. The Stampeders had to move the football, get something going. Well, they got seven points last time. And again, now this is back-to-back -back first downs. Larry Kaharick was telling me yesterday, he said, we are not where we want to be, but we're on the right path. This playoff game is a good milestone. Well, it really is. You know, he, he's very happy finishing second, very happy to be playing at home. He said he felt the enthusiasm generating during the week because of home field advantage. He said, it'll be a close one. He said, if we play well, we win. Barrett gets outside, but he can't throw. Vince Goldsmith made the initial contact with him as he stepped up, si up inside. He had people waiting for him. Well, what they try to do is he swing McVay out of the backfield. See at the right of your screen. Now that takes Suter out of the blitz. Then they bring Brock Smith to the inside, try to throw to him, but he wasn't open. So he has to pull that ball down and take the sack. So again, now that puts him into the long yardage, second and 15. Back at the 49-yard line. Sitter again right up at the line of scrimmage. A procedure call, however, against Calgary. Saskatchewan undoubtedly will accept the penalty, making it second and 20. That time they pulled the quarterback. Time count violation, Calgary number eight, second down repeated. They showed that blitz again, Don, and then Barrett goes to audible. They dropped out of it. They went through zone coverage, and it fooled him. He took a little bit long call in his audible, and as a result, his 20 seconds ran out. 2.50 is the time remaining in the third quarter. Second and 20, back at the 54-yard line. Barrett is dropped for a loss. He had two on top of him that time, Chuck Klingbell and Lewis. Well, the big thing about Klingbell, is Coach Gregory told us today, he bench pressures 550 pounds, and he said if they don't double-team him, I'll guarantee you he will get upfield. He said he's so strong, 
he'll shove them right out of the way. And Goldsmith and Klingville are there to sack them. So the defense came up big when it had to. He bench presses 550. They say he's trying for 600. If he tells me he does 600, it's okay with me. <laughs> That's just a little more than you oh. bench press, isn't it? It sure is. I can't even lift the end of the bench. <laughs> Third down, punt. Jeff Bentram is back there on the punt return squad. And Bentram has run out of bounds Get the up at the 30-yard line with 2.16 remaining in the quarter. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC. Since 1909, this trophy has rewarded Canadian gridiron excellence. On November 26, share the memories once more. CBC Sports and the Grey Cup, a championship team. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 31-yard line. And they give the ball to Milson Jones, who runs it to the 54. That's why they wanted Milson Jones back in the ball game. He has something of a history of coming up with big games at playoff time. Boy, he sure did. And what a job by Foley Stevenson and Anderson, that offensive line. Run that drop play. He got in behind them, 22 yards. We were talking during that timeout, Don. They've got to start moving the football again. Calgary was starting to take control. Yes, after that touchdown, Stampeders seemed to gain momentum. Tim McRae inside the Calgary 50, stopped at the 49. When the team starts to take control defensively, that's when your offensive line has to say to heck with it. We're going to win it right back up front, run at the strength, run at the middle of that defense, and let's knock them out of there, and let's get momentum back on our side. A seven-point game with 115 remaining in the third quarter. Second and three, Saskatchewan. Tim McRae fights his way close to the 45-yard line. He should have another Rough Rider first down. Yep, chains are moving. Good job of running. You saw Kenny Ford, 97, the linebacker, come up and try to take McCray on. He just run right over him, put Ford down, took two more to bring him down, but he still got the first and 10. 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's first and 10, Saskatchewan. The Rough Riders at the 46 of the Stampeders. Vernell Quinn goes out. Doug Landry is in at the linebacking position. Matt Finlay was up at the line indicating a blitz. Then he backed out of there and the Riders pick up about one yard. McCray tried to go inside. Then he wanted to bounce outside and just turn on his speed. But Warnick got those big hands out there, pulled him down. Limits him to about a yard. In case you missed it, earlier this afternoon, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defeated the Toronto Argonauts 30-7. to as a result, the defending Grey Cup champions next Sunday will advance against the Hamilton Tiger Cats at Ivor Wynn Stadium for the Eastern Championship. Intercepted. Matt Finlay stepped in front of that Kent Austin throw, and the Stampeders take over at the 35-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. It's a seven-point game at McMahon Stadium. Finlay with what could be a very timely interception for the Calgary Stampeders. And we start the fourth quarter. First and ten. Calgary at their own 37-yard line. There's the option with the pitch to Kennard Martin. He cuts it back in, but there are too many green and white jerseys over there to limit his progress to about three yards. While we talk about Matt Finley, third leading tackler on his Calgary team, 6'2", 225. You see Austin step back, you see him turn his head, just drop back in, throwing that ball into too many red jerseys that time. Finley comes up with the interception. Got a Stampeder injured down there, Don. Mike Palumbo, I believe, is the injured Calgary player. Through three quarters of play, statistically, this is the way the two teams shape up. Both sides have turned it over four times. You know, Stampeders made a little bit of a comeback. You look at the yards passing, back there five yards ahead, but they'd like to get that rushing game going. They came out and ran that option right away to try to get it going, but no success. So 
Danny Barris faced second and long. He's got to convert it again. Have you ever wondered what it's like to stand at midfield at the Sky Dome? Well, during Grey Cup week, you can get that opportunity. The 1989 Grey Cup kickoff luncheon will be held on November 22nd, 12 noon, on the field at the Sky Dome. Tickets are $25 each. They're available by phoning 869-3759 in Toronto. Proceeds will go to support Big Brothers of Metropolitan Toronto. That's the 1989 Grey Cup kickoff luncheon on November 22nd, 12 noon, on the field at the Sky Dome. Craig Watson goes into the ball game to replace Mike Palumbo. Not a good sign. Wasn't able to walk off the field. That center, you know, that center, very important part of that offensive line, right in the middle. Usually the guy pulls everything together, so that moves Spalatini to center. And Craig Watson goes in at guard. Spalatini, Palumbo, and Ferroni. Three members of that offensive line of an Italian ancestry. They usually get together before home games and uh, have a big feed of pasta. Hand off to Andy McVay. He won't get the first down. Stopped at the 45-yard line and driven back. They try to run that trap again. Send that back in motion. Kennard Martin out to the sidelines. Try to get a linebacker to go with him and get McVay inside, but no chance. Never had a chance. Stan Peters, interesting, interestingly enough, did not remain in Calgary last night. They took the team up to Kananaskis, a resort just outside of Calgary. A bit of team togetherness to get them ready for this playoff encounter. Good kick that bounces out of bounds deep in Saskatchewan territory at the 20-yard line. Well, the big story this week, of course, has been from East Germany and coming up later this evening at 11 p.m. local time Peter Mansbridge will host a special edition of Sunday Report direct from the Berlin Wall be sure to stay tuned for this special CBC Sunday Report first and ten Saskatchewan from the 20 yard line Tim McRae wrapped up by Howard Fields as soon as he caught the football. A gain of about one yard. Howard Fields just sat back, sat back, sat back, and knew Austin had to throw it to McRae. As soon as he cocked the arm to let it go, Fields was there. What's he get? Two yards. That's good defense. Give these Calgary Stampeders credit. At halftime, I think there were a lot of people ready to write them off. They have fought back. They trail by a converted touchdown. The difference is Saskatchewan hasn't been able to move the ball. The defense came to life for the Stampede. Ted Austin's in trouble. Gets away from the initial pressure. Now will run the football. He'll get the first down. Junior Thurman, the safety, had to come up to make the tackle. Somehow, Kent Austin was able to escape the pressure. That's one of those cases where Austin got moving straight ahead, and he just decided he was just going to go till somebody knocked him down. And it's amazing, this next thing. Now, he's just running straight ahead. Watch, I don't know how he gets through, right there. Seems like a heck of a lot of people there, and then he goes up and wisely hits the deck and takes what he got. He got the first down, and that's a big thing for them right now. Ball control, so important. An injured Calgary defensive back, Chris Major, will have to come out for at least one play. He and Donald Narcisse have been waging a great battle on those deep patterns that Saskatchewan has been attempting. And with... Major out of there. Greg Peterson comes into the ball game. He'll go to the safety position, and Junior Thurman will move over to replace Major on that left corner. Brian Walling gets the handoff, and he's brought down hard by middle linebacker Doug Landry. Well, you have to give Landry a lot of credit. I'll tell you, he's staying in there, and he's still doing his job. You come running with the football, and he'll be there to make the hit. He led the league in tackles this year with 122. Walling goes off. Nelson Jones come in, comes into the ball game. Oh, 11.56 is the time remaining. Here's the blitz from the backside. 
David McCrary, and I think that may have drawn a penalty flag, a late penalty flag. It appeared as though he was across that line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. Let's I see. sure was. He lines up. You line up wide, and then as you get closer to the snap, you start sneaking in and try to time it to hit it just as that ball snapped. He just got a little bit too much of a start. Took Off a while for the official. Calgary number three. First down. To throw the flag on McCrary. The play had already been stopped before that flag finally came flying out. Chris Major back in the ball game. He missed eight games this year with an ankle injury. What I was concerned with. Watch the top of the screen. There he comes. And you can see he's clearly offside. But what he's trying to do is hit that line of scrimmage the minute the ball snapped there at the right time. And then he gets a good jump. Penalty gives Saskatchewan the first down. Price is after Austin. Finally catches him. Good job by Howard Fields. They try to hit Tim McCray swinging out of the backfield, and Fields was there. That forced Austin to pull it down, and then they all get after him. 11-18 remains in the game. 23-16. Saskatchewan leads Calgary. Second and seven. James Ellingson, wide left. Donald Narcisse comes up to the right. He's lined up against Major. Austin dumps it off over the middle, and Matt Finlay is there to make the stop on Tim McRae. Get Matt every time. Second down and eight. McRae gets one yard. Finley gets McRae, and now they have to punt the football. The play of Matt Finlay at that outside linebacking position was one of the reasons that the Stampeders were able to go to those five import defensive backs. You know, he's been hanging around. You know, when he came out of college out of Eastern Michigan, they said he might have had a knee problem. He wasn't able to get on track. But I'll tell you, at 225 pounds, he's got good size, and he's starting to play very well. And that's why Kuharik did that, Don. He's really happy with Matt Bimmel. Third down kick. Darcy caught. Runs it back to the 37-yard line. 10.28 is the time remaining. This is Foster's CFL on CBC. Equipment man George Hopkins with a fur hat and look at the rest of his attire. He's wearing shorts. <laughs> his elevator is going to the top floor, but there's nobody home. I'm not sure about that. That's <laughs> strange cargo. Bernard Martin takes the pitch to the short side, runs out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Good job by Martin. Get outside. Good job of blocking. Larry Willis trying to air it down there, trying to block Steve Wiggins. Neither one wanted to hit the other. They stood there and got in the way. Martin had nowhere to go but bounce out of bounds. 10.07 remaining. Larry Herrick said he wanted to establish a running game. Took him a long time to get around to it. If you remember that stats at halftime. Right now, if they get their running game going, it goes in their favor, and this is the fourth quarter. Bernard Martin gets the first down, fighting his way out to the 48. This is the time to do it. This is the time to establish it. Dan Bruni, Lloyd Fairbanks on the left side. Martin gets right in behind him, and he gets enough for the first down this time. Watch it. Here we go. Dan Bruni, the left guard. Pull, little cross block. Good job of running. Fairbanks, Fairbanks blocks down. Peroni blocks out. Tom Spalatini in there at center, replacing the injured Mike Palumbo with Craig Watson moving into the guard spot. Danny Barrett pulls it down. Now he'll run. He has stopped at the midfield strike, but that is a gain of about seven yards. 9.05 remains in the game. Let's go to the sidelines and bring in Scotto. Don here on the Calgary bench does not look good for Stampeders starting center Mike Palumbo number 65 is trying to loosen up his left ankle right now he's got a bad sprain they think uh, he's had it retaped and if it loosens up he thinks he'll be able to go back in but that does not appear to be a likelihood at this point it could well be the Stampeders will finish this game without their starting center as we just saw he attempted to get down in the stance position he was unable to do so sleep a little bit don't they you know they they mess around and run they mess around and Danny Barrett runs and then all of a sudden bang Willis comes up with the big play 
Back to pass. Willis got one-on-one -on -one coverage and it just drop it. A very well-thrown football over the defender, right down into Willis's hands, and he steps out of bounds right there. But a big, big play. It's just all of a sudden they're happy with four, happy with four. Didn't bang. They hit you with a big one. A 30-yard gain for Willis, and those are impressive statistics. 141 yards and four receptions. First and ten from the 25-yard line, Calgary. This one deep into the end zone, and Marshall Toner could not catch up with it. Barrett had to release oh. that one quickly. He saw it coming. He saw the blitz coming from the, his right side, and if you can see it, you know to get rid of it. All he does is take the chance, throw it far. That way, if your man doesn't get it, no one does it. Good job by Mark. He flips Goldsmith, but if you saw, there was another white jersey coming outside, so Danny Barrett knew he didn't have time. Eight minutes remaining in the game. 23-16, Saskatchewan leads Calgary. It's second and ten. The Stampeders at the Saskatchewan 25-yard line. Three receivers to the right. Barrett dumps it off over the middle intended for Martin incomplete. Linebacker Dan Rashevich and dropped back with Kennard Martin and was able to make the play. It, again, once again, they've done it all day. Put, put, put Glenn Suter up on the line of scrimmage. Come on a blitz. When you do that, if you're running back, in this case, Kennard Martin gets one-on-one -on -one coverage with a linebacker, just try to dump it to him. They're really upset. They felt Rasevich had interfered with number 28, Martin. I don't know. I, we'll get a good look at it here on a replay, but I'm not so sure. I thought it was pretty good defense. He just throws it out in front of him. Mark McLaughlin will attempt a field goal from the 32-yard line with 7.28 remaining in the game. Kink is good. So four points separate the Rough Riders and the Stampeders with 7.24 left. Seven twenty-four remains at McMahon Stadium. Saskatchewan leading Calgary 23-19. The winner to advance next Sunday against the Edmonton Eskimos at Commonwealth Stadium in the West Final. This game's tough on Gary Gerchick, the line coach in the Eskimos down here watching the game. He doesn't know who, you know, he don't know who's gonna win. He's trying to cover both clubs still. First and ten from the 35 yard line. Austin dumps it off for Tim McRae. Good play by Doug Landry. He limited that game to a yard, a yard and a half. Even though he's playing with a lack of mobility in one arm, he has played well. That is an outstanding play. Austin had a lot of time, and then he leaks out underneath, and out of nowhere, Landry had dropped back five or six yards, but when he saw McCray drift out, he took off, and he arrived up there to limit it to one yard. That is good defense. Second and nine, Mitchell Price. Was in pursuit of the quarterback. He managed to throw it for Jeff Fairholm incomplete. With a little bit of pressure on Austin, causing him to move around, not allowing him to stay set, get those feet set, and throw the ball. Howard Fields makes a big, big play on Fairholm. 6.31 remaining in the game. Calgary will get the ball back. Wherever you're looking in this afternoon on the CBC Television Network, we hope you're enjoying the action from McMahon Stadium and that you'll be with us next Sunday afternoon from Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton when we bring you the Eastern Final between the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, 30-7 to winners this afternoon over Toronto and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And, of course, in two weeks' time for the Grey Cup game from the Sky Dome in Toronto. On this return, Kennard Martin gets outside and then runs out of bounds. They'll be scrimmaging from the 43 with 6.05 left. This is Foster CFL on CBC. Well, whatever message Larry Kaharick delivered to the Stampeders at halftime, the players have responded. John Gregory must now be wondering if his Rough Riders can hang on to that four-point lead with six minutes remaining here at McMahon Stadium. First and ten, Calgary. The ball is at the 44-yard line of the Stampeders. Barrett rolls out of there. This was designed run all the way. And he picks up just a couple of yards. That option play down the line of scrimmage. Try to get somebody to force the quarterback and then pitch it to Danny Barrett is hurting a little bit, and that's not a good sign. So very quickly, Terrence Jones will have to warm up. 
Well, and rest hit. assured, uh, the, the trainer is going to stay out on the field just as long as possible with Danny Barrett enabling Jones to loosen up that throwing arm. He was not anticipating going into the ball game. Well, that is a tough thing, Don, right now to be standing on the sidelines for the last couple hours and now have to get loose to go in there and play. That's very, very difficult. Plus, he's young. But Danny Barrett looks like he's in a lot of pain working on that right ankle. This had been the most productive season ever for Danny Barrett. He was acquired prior to the start of the regular season. He started eight games and played in 13 in total. 16 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. And all of those statistics are personal highs. So Terrence Jones comes into the ball game As he warms up, we remind you, this program is copyright and is strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, Exhibition or distribution in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is strictly prohibited. Terrence Jones, the rookie, out of Tulane, 6'1", 210 pounds, a start. Yeah, he's going to try to turn up. He's going to turn up Albright. The first thing he's going to see, there was the weight on the anchor. It looked like... Plainville shoved Peroni back into it, caused it at the turn. Second down play, Terrence Jones is in trouble. Bobby Jurison from his defensive end spot drops Jones back at the 35-yard line. Well, I-13 remains in the game. They came with the blitz, which you kind of figure they would with a rookie quarterback coming in. He was looking for Kennard Martin right up the seam again. But he was covered, and he had nowhere to throw it. And Jerison's unblocked. He's not going to miss too many tackles. Larry Kaharick commiserating with Terrence Jones and indicating what he wants him to do on the next series. Richie Hall fields the third down punt at the 40-yard line. And Matt Finlay is there to arrest his forward progress at the 45. 35-yard kick, a five-yard return. Well, two weeks from today, we'll have the Grey Cup game for you from the Sky Dome in Toronto. Our CBC Grey Cup coverage of this 77th edition of the National Classic gets underway at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, and Grey Cup game coverage begins at 5.30. So plan on spending your Grey Cup Sunday with CBC Television. All of our production and technical personnel will be there to bring you the excitement of the 1989 Grey Cup game. Tim McRae coming out of the backfield takes the pass up to the 49-yard line. A little bit of zone defense now. Drop him back. Force him. Throw it underneath. McRae makes a tackle and as he catches the football, take a look at the number of red jerseys that are waiting on him. Here he comes out into the flat. He catches and turns around. And they have him surrounded. He's got nowhere to go. Five of them. 420 remains. Calgary needs the ball back. Trailing by four. Drop play. Nelson Jones to the midfield strike. There's a penalty flag. He'll be very close to a first down. Holding will bring it back. Referee Ross Perrier will march off the yardage against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Holding Saskatchewan number 64, second down repeated. And while he marches it off, let's bring in Scott o. Well, Don, the Calgary Stampeders are doing everything in their power to get their starting quarterback, Danny Barrett, back into the game. He has twisted, as you saw, his right ankle. He would not let the training staff take off his shoes, so they're spatting it, which is to say they're taping it on the outside. He's going to give it a try. And he says do uh, everything in his power to go back in. Ken Moore, guilty of that holding call. Second and 16. Ken Austin throwing for Jeff Fairholm. He's caught by Howard Field short of the first down. Calgary will get the ball back. More than happy to give up that completion if you're the Calgary Stan Peters. Austin sprinted to his left, threw it back across the field. Howard Fields had perfect coverage. Make the catch, make the tackle. They have to punt the ball. 339 remains. Will Johnson is the injured Calgary Stampeder. He was in pursuit of Kent Austin, and he was really deep in that Saskatchewan backfield, and he is down at the 20-yard line. This game has taken its toll 
on both sides of the field, but there have been more Calgary Stampeders going down than Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Barrett is up, testing that ankle. He's going to try and get back in there. They, they have to have him back in there. I don't, I don't like the chances. I mean, I think Terrence Jones is going to be a good quarterback and having a lot of potential. But when the things are on the line and you're down to the last three minutes of a football game, I want the veteran in there. The problem with having that right ankle hurt is that's where he puts the pressure when he sets up the throw, isn't it? Yeah, you got to push off of it. You know, it's one of those things that I think if there's any way Danny's going to go back in there, he'll be there. But as you say, sometimes when teams are hurting, they tend to put on a little more effort, put forth a little more effort, a little more physical. Regardless of the injuries today, the winner of this game will be ready to play next week. Darcy Cott now drops back to join Kennard Martin for this third down kick by Terry Baker. 323 is the time remaining. Not a good kick off the side of his foot. And it bounces back towards the line of scrimmage. It's picked up by Darcy Cott. And he returns it to the 50-yard line. Well, that was a good effort by Darcy Cott. Lousy kick. It only hit about 10 yards. Pass, 25-yard kick, 11-yard return. Pretty good field position with three minutes left for the Stampeders to do it. 3.08 is the time remaining. And Danny Barrett obviously was having too many problems trying to push off that right ankle. Terrence Jones is going to stay in there as the Calgary quarterback. Marshall Toner makes the catch down to the 35-yard line. A nice throw. Toner upfield about eight yards and slant to the inside right on the money. And Marshall Toner is injured on the play. Marshall Toner separated his shoulder last week in that final game of the season, a loss to the B.C. Lions. He made a catch for 24 yards on the throw from Terrence Jones, landed heavily on that shoulder. He's gone off to the Calgary bench. Jacques Chapdelaine has taken his spot. It's first and 10 Calgary at the Saskatchewan 36-yard line. 2.43 with the clock running. The time remaining here at McMahon Stadium. Terrence Jones throwing deep for Willis. Incomplete. Steve Wiggins was covering Willis, who has made four catches today for 141 yards. Well, again, they come with the all-out blitz. Glenn Suter coming on a safety blitz, one-on-one -on -one coverage, Wiggins and Willis. So what, just what happens, boy, he's giving him a lot of cushion, just going to try to outrun him. Jones couldn't get it far enough downfield. Come with that blitz again, break him to the post. He's going to score. Marshall Toner back into the ball game. Jacques Chapdelaine to the bench. Second and 10, 2.34 is the time remaining. The ball at the 36, Terrence Jones. Looks downfield. Throws deep for Zeno. He's got it. Two. Tell you what I like is the way Zeno positioned himself with the defender. When we see it on a replay, he stepped in front of the defender and he used that six foot three inch height of his and went up and got it in the air. That's an excellent reception. So Mark McLaughlin with the point after. And now the Calgary Stampeders have a 26-23 lead with 2.24 remaining. Zeno and Terrence Jones, a formidable passing combination when they were teammates at Tulane. They combine on the Calgary touchdown that has the Stampeders in front. All right, we'll take a look at it. Now, this time, Saskatchewan drops into the zone. All he's looking for is somewhere to throw it. Down the right sideline is Zeno. He lays it up high. Watch the position at number 11. Excellent. In front. Excellent. Can't stop it. Richie Hall at 5'6", Zeno at 6'3", jumping ability and size advantage to Zeno. Touchdown. So that 
can do this all day. I should have been in there earlier, coach. <laughs> you know, the question now, Don, is they, did they score too soon? There's a lot of time on the clock. Coach Gary, very happy. He's got to be impressed with the play of Jones. Two key completions Jones made in that drive for the touchdown. 2.24 is the time remaining. Tim McRae takes the ball at the 13-yard line. Ronell Quinn breaks McRae down after a run back of 19 yards. Two minutes, 16 seconds, a lot of time. Ken Austin knows how to use the clock. He'd love to have the touchdown to win it, but I'll tell you what, Dave Ridgeway is not a bad guy to call on when you need three, so if we look at Ridgeway, we're going to need about 35, 40 yards. And two minutes to do it in. He's got the time. Well, Ridgeway is capable of kicking one from midfield. Austin buys some time, throws to Benton, first down. Right now, the Stampeders with Garcia split out over here. They're not going to take any chances of going man coverage. What they do is roll Chris uh, Major up in a zone defense and drop Howard Fields behind him. So Ventrum finds the hole in the middle of the zone. Watch it. As he comes out here on the boot like no one will be near Ventrum. All right, but coming from the outside, there comes Major, and there's Field. But they're not going to let Narcisse beat him. Oh, did Fairholm take a hit from Hopkins as he reached out for that pass? I'll tell you, Hopkins is a very, very intelligent quarterback. He sits out there and he's watching Ken Austin. You know, we always say, tell quarterbacks, read defenders. Well, those defenders are reading you, too. Here's the throw, and there comes Hopkins. When he sees him cock that arm, he goes right to Fairholme, and boy, he put a hit on him. 2.03 is the time remaining. Second and 10. Austin throws for Jeff Ventrum. That will be another Saskatchewan first down. Well, that was an excellent catch. The ball was delivered. Austin really couldn't step forward to throw the football because he had pressure on him. He had to throw it while he was standing flat-footed. The ball's thrown low, but watch number one, Jeff Bentram. Gets those arms under it, makes the catch. Landry and Fields indicate they did not think he made the catch, but the officials ruled otherwise. Incomplete. It was intended for Ellingson, and he had Chris Major with him. And Tank Landry thought he should have had the interception. That ball went down inside. Landry was there. He just couldn't get his hands on it. Down to 148, second and 10. Still got lots of time. John Gregory realizes that his team needs about 10 more yards if he's going to be with him. Field goal range. Here's the draw play. Brian Walling, big run. Gone. He's going to score. A 50-yard gallop by Brian Walling. Oh, yeah. And everyone, I'm sure, was thinking... Field goal. Get the ball into Dave Ridgeway's range. Brian Wally takes off on a 50-yard gallop, and he scores the touchdown that has restored the Saskatchewan lead. 29-26, 138 the time remaining. And there's still a lot of time on that clock. You know, I'll tell you, 138, plenty of time to do things. Brian Wally, 5'8", 190, hit up the middle, turned to the outside, Two Calgary Stampeders collided downfield, and it was over. He went in with no problem. David Ridgway with the point after. Suter holds. There's the kick. And the Riders again have a four-point lead. Just a couple of weeks ago, Brian Walling was not even on the Saskatchewan roster. He was on the Edmonton Eskimo practice roster. The Riders had injury problems. They grabbed both he and Slater Zaleski to fill holes. And what a job Walling does running 50 yards with a block from James Ellingson for the go-ahead touchdown. Again, the interior of the offensive line. They get him into the secondary. Watch him. Here he comes up through. You see the good block. All day just kind of screens Finley. The good block was inside. 
Ellingson hits Major, knocks him into Thurman, and Walling is gone. That's an outstanding run. I think he might be looking forward to playing the Eskimos again. You know, he just left there a few, few weeks ago. Well, John Gregory last week in Edmonton for the final game of the season said, we owe a lot of thanks to the Eskimos for providing us with a couple of players when we were really strapped, when we had injuries taking a toll, and we were missing people at a running back position with Milson Jones out, and at a receiver position with Fairholm and Bresciani out, and we were able to get Walling and Zaleski. I don't think at the time he anticipated that Walling might emerge as a playoff hero. The ball is loose, and it's knocked out of bounds by Darcy Cox. Or was it, it was tapped out here. of bounds earlier? Yeah, it's out of bounds here when the Calgary Stamp Peter player touched it. He was laying out of bounds when he grabbed it. So the ball's coming back here, and they're going to have a minute and a half to work. Their problem, though, they need a touchdown now. The three points doesn't do them any good. From the reverse it. angle, we may see, I believe it's Denard Martin, trying to handle that football. So there's the ball going to the sidelines. It hits him as he slipped. Now, he's out of bounds. Tries just to reach in and touch it. He's out of bounds. And it's going to be knocked down anyway, but big play. Andy McVeigh. Up to the 37-yard line. What a finish to this Western semifinal. 30-26 is the score. 127 the time remaining. It's first like and this, ten huh? Calgary. You gotta like this kind of play. Get it going. Let's go. 14 yards on the pick. Terrence Jones at quarterback. He was looking for Zeno. Take your time. And he takes his time. Dump the ball to McCray or uh, McVeigh again. He came right inside, came open. Minute and 21 seconds. You still got a lot of time. The key is to hit the passes. Hit the short ones. If they give you the deep one, take it. But they're not going to give them to you. You're going to have to work it down the field, and you need a touchdown. Yes, they have to put it in the end zone as they trail by four. 121, the time remaining. Second and 10. Ball is at the 37-yard line. Andy McVeigh makes the catch, fumbles the football. Saskatchewan has recovered. And that earlier joy of the Calgary Stampeders turns to anguish with 112 left to play. Well, Jones did just, he did a good job just escaping the rush, scrambles to his right, throws back across his body to McVay, and McVay gets hit from behind, and the ball pops loose. Saskatchewan now think first down. A minute 12. All right, we're going to get the pressure from inside. Going to chase him out of the pocket. Here it comes. Gary Lewis again. He's been there all day. Get rid of it. Who makes the hit? Eddie Lowe. Who else? Made a lot of those this year. First down, thinking first down with your short yardage offense in there. The Rough Riders with Tim McCray carrying the ball, pick up three. Right now they're trying to take as much time off that clock as possible. They would like to retain possession, but to run that clock down is the prime objective. Yeah, well, they don't, points aren't important to them, but all they want to see is that 106 go. Point means nothing to them. It's the big play right here. Is he going to keep it on the ground? Is he going to throw it? Short yardage offense is in there. They're going to give it to Tim McRae. He's going to get a first down, and that should be the ball game. Even though he was forced out of bounds, he was forced out of bounds after he got the first down. So they got three more shots, 46 seconds left. They should be able to do it now. Well, for a fleeting moment, I think that Larry Koharik felt that he was going to be taking his team to Edmonton next Sunday for a battle of Alberta. But it looks very much as though the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be making their second trip to Edmonton in two weeks. Tim McRae tackled right at the line of scrimmage. The last time that Saskatchewan and Edmonton met in a Western final was 1976, and Saskatchewan won 23-13. Erika Herrick has called a timeout with 44 seconds remaining. 30-26 Saskatchewan leads. 1976. Ron Lancaster, I think, vividly recalls that playoff game. Saskatchewan-Edmonton. 
Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even close. Well, this blows the score. I don't know. Yeah, we won that. Well, we'd lost three straight years to him going up to their place. We had to get him in our backyard once. We had, we had to win one, and we go down and lose a breakup, so it didn't matter. We ruined the season anyway. And then the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had to endure a long drought before they again were involved in postseason activity. Second down, Austin is going to roll out, and he'll get the first down. Thirty-eight seconds remaining. Thirty-eight seconds. Third down. Four. Pardon, pardon me. I said he was going to get the first down. He is stopped four yards short. And he had Gary Lewis. He had the short yard. And Gary Lewis was wide open down there. I don't think there was ever any doubt that Ken Austin was running. He had the ball under his arm coming around the corner. He wasn't going to throw it then. Well, if you come out of the game, if Ridgeway kicks this through, they need a touchdown just to tie. Come out of this game free, go into Edmonton next week, get some things going. You know, there's only two weeks left in the season. You're still alive. Movement at the line of scrimmage. And if it's offside Calgary, that will finish it. No, it's a procedure call against Saskatchewan. But just 17 seconds remain. However, this time, the clock will not start until the ball is snapped. Illegal procedure. Saskatchewan, third down repeated. Vic Stevenson is the injured Saskatchewan player. He lines up at that offensive tackle position. He's a product of the University of Calgary. He will be replaced by Mark Ernest. So that takes the ball back to the 31-yard line. 17 seconds remaining. Eric shouting instructions. I'm not quite sure what he wants them to do. I think you want to try to block it. Here they come. There's the kick by Ridgeway. It's good. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are 14 seconds away from advancing to the Western Final next Sunday at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton against the Eskimos. What might Kaharik be saying to Terrence Jones? Got a lot of time. We have 14 seconds. A lot of time? <laughs> well, this is just, you're just going to have to throw it down the field now. There's no time where just throw it. you got to have a long pass completion to get another play yet. So you can't mess around. Just... You got Willis, you can put some guys out there. Let's, who do you want to throw it to? Put Willis and Zeno over there and throw it up high and let him jump ball for it. Just don't have time to be playing around. Brock Smith and Willis go to the same side of the field. Terrence Jones throwing deep, incomplete. He was looking for Willis. Seven seconds remain. Well, what he did is they're dropping so many people deeper. It's going to be very, very difficult for Zeno or Willis. One was on one side of the field, one's on the other. They were going to go, and then Jones picked, takes his choice. There's so many white jerseys back there, he's going to have to just take that chance. Throw it up there. There's nothing wrong with that pass he just made. Even though there's three white jerseys there, you have to take the chance. Well, the Rough Riders recall a game that they lost with no time left in the clock That's right. on one of those jump ball situations at Taylor Field against the D.C. Lions. Deep down the sidelines, and this one is... Intercepted by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and Richie Hall simply hangs onto the ball. The final play of the game, and the Rough Riders have won it. They defeat the Calgary Stampeders 33-26. I think the big thing today is a heck of a football game. The Stampeders came back after a lethargic first half. Looked like they were going to put it away. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders showed a lot of heart when they put that ball in the end zone when they had to at the end. And the big thing is I don't think Saskatchewan got many people injured today. They will be ready to go next week at Commonwealth. John Gregory talking to the assistant coaches of the Calgary Stampeders. Larry Kaharick was the first man off the field and into the Calgary dressing room. The Calgary players offering congratulations to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. John, don't bother looking for Kaharick unless you want to go into the Calgary dressing room because that's where he is. Saskatchewan, 33-26 victors. They will face Edmonton next Sunday in the Western Final at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton. Sie müssen...
pin the crest. The Riders win their first playoff game in a dozen years to advance to the West Final against the Eskimos next Sunday, 